Yeah. Oh, oh God. Dangerous you know, chemical. Why do you have a oh. fucking, why do you hey, have, man. it literally is a propane tank sized thermos of water. Yes. If you and water, have, is water in there? What's in there for real? This is water and it stays cold and I love my new water bottle. You don't need to be that fucking hydrated, bro. I've always been hydrated. I was before the curve. Uh, back in high school, I used to take a <laughs> ragged ginger ale bottle around. <laughs> Filled with water. My old man used to like ginger ale and club soda. Those Before it got trendy, you started drinking water, carrying the water jug. I Bothers was always me. drinking way too much water. Cause, cause yes. in LA, That's enough water for we, my shower and yesterday? my bath. What do we say yesterday? In LA, bitches love avocado toast, lavender ice cream, uh -huh. and carrying water jugs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. carrying yeah. water jugs. Will might have started the trend. Yeah, I, well, I absolutely did. I you used could to have get... a ragged... You, you remember, you used to, I used to dress uh, probably like you guys did, like a pickup basketball game was about to break out. I used to have like... <laughs> yeah. just, Bull shorts and like a horrible free T-shirt, and then you'd have like the the two liter bottle was all just skid marks and yeah. dirt, and it was just sitting underneath the post, and and then and that's and now today we got a thing that looks like a, a propane tank. It's, if you had a family of nine, you could go for three weeks. This would be enough <laughs> propane, one hundred percent, and you could I could get halfway across the Sahara with just that right yes, there. Yes, is, is that, is well, that I'd just have to tap scrap water? that to my back. This is just L.A. tap water. As a matter of well, fact, bro. no, my good friend Dylan Stewart, with whom I grew up in. Uh, back home in sure. Canada. He lives out here sure. in Long Beach. You know him? He lives in Long Beach. Sure, I know sure. That's Dylan. right. He's out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He li mm -hmm. He's a little bit of a conspiracy theorist, and he went through, it did his own testing on the LA water system and the tap water. He says it's much better than it was even five years ago. Not is he, is he a scientist, or does he have well, any background? I mean, so, you tell so, me, man. So my friend's Mara, my friend, <laughs> my friend's Mara is a you structural joking? or engineer, civil, civil engineer who deals with just water. Yeah. And she's a scientist, has her PhD, and she he was explaining that the water supply, as it comes through taps and yeah. all the stringent standards, is a lot of times way cleaner than yes. you get from bottled water. Exactly what his yeah. friend found. Would you guys like to try this? Would you guys like to try this? I'm good, bro. I'll pass. I'll I'll pass, pass some like water. Take, water. I'm going to take some myself. Don't, don't. You'll be jealous when you hear how refreshed don't. I sound it's after piss this. piss me off. Don't. Yeah. Don't. Mm, mm, mm. You makes know what, me man? blood red mad. Me too. <sighs> hey, Brendan's going to punch you I right in the well, fucking face. Uh, don't do that. See? It make, I make it sound I have, good. I have my own fluids here. Oh, sweet. Yeah, Nothing with LA tap water, though. Yeah. You got the, uh, what is that? The uh, uh, Itacho <laughs> unsweetened bold green tea. It's from Koreatown. Yeah, they green don't have tea. any sugar in that one. No. 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 Hey, we didn't do a commercial, man. You we should do, do a, a commercial. commercial. Yeah. We, we want to do a commercial, and we thought maybe you could pipe in. You got Cause, it. Because the thing is, like, you know how I look super young, right? Yeah. Uh, right. You and know. you know how... Well. And yeah. you know how I, I, I have boundless I energy. I, I have yeah, boundless yeah. energy because okay. I it's like, Brian, you tap into the source. And in a way, it's not magic. It's no, not magic. I feel like you're the one saying all this stuff. No, though, you know? no. But, but, you're heavily influencing what other people think, or at least you're trying to, no. by constantly saying it. No, 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 but people always say... Jesus. Like when you say that's the rumor, yeah, yeah but yeah. you're the rumor. Also, when you say people always say, that right. means people never say <laughs> no, whatever you're no, about no. to say. <laughs> no, but I'm saying in the sporting circles okay. And, okay. And, and in the artistic circles where energy right. and charisma right. and linear, right. and linear so sporting, symmetry means sporting everything. Sporting circles meaning yeah. where you and your wife play tennis and the artistic circles where you and your children do crafts at home. Look, bro, I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. that's not I, just... I was I'm, thinking the same thing. No, I'm talking about in the avant-garde, oh. in the avant Oh, uh, don't circles. say it like I'm that. I'm just saying Ugh. in the avant-garde circles oh. of you, didn't you know even say the D. Uh, yeah, it's so French. Well, because as you speak Francais, huh? uh -huh. and and uh, people go, Brian, you have boundless energy. What no, is your people. secret? And yeah, and I always say, well, I I I know where to get the best supplements on planet Earth because oh, they're yeah. they're Earth grown. I would love to get into some of that, as you know, in my water tank. If I'm not carrying water, I'm carrying boiling hot clam chowder, <laughs> and it hasn't been good to me physically. Well, I've then been why gaining I, weight? Yeah, your like nutritionist told you to carry around. Well, what do you put? Chowder. What do you put my in the clam? What do you put? In the clam chowder because clams themselves are super right. healthy. But what do you? What else do you add to it? Sugar, flour. Uh, That's gonna salt. put weight on okay. you. Yeah. Well, is it? Yes. You, can, can, what, you guys what, tell what me. What can you help them out with, dude? Onit.com. Onit.com. It's got the best 
supplements on planet Earth. For Forget clam the clam chowder. chowder. No, no, no clam chowder. Okay, I'm sorry. That's no. out of the equation. Okay. No, you got your Dolce Whey. You got your hemp yeah. protein. You That's got all stuff. kinds. Yes. How about Alpha Brain? You got your Alpha Brain. I've heard a lot about Alpha Brain. Well, well, if you like being clear, do you like walking around all foggy? I can't think. I can't remember. No, I anything. don't. And every time I do, I tra- drink more clam chowder no, and I <laughs> end up more foggy. Well, clam. you know what we could do? What? We could put some of that Insta Alpha Brain in these clam chowder. There you go, it. Brandon. Then you got some Alpha Brain clam chowder. Or you just extract the water, what little there is from the clam chowder, with an expensive distillery process, yeah. and then you add the alpha brain. The skin complicated. So, yeah, Onit.com so, slash right at 10% off. Oh, you get you get clam chowder? No clam chowder at Onit.com. No clam chowder. Wow, that sounds Onit.com. great. Yeah. I pay full price for my clam chowder. Well, well yeah. there's no supplements except for clams. <laughs> clams. Yeah. Clam. Clam it up. So no, I feel we'll, like we haven't seen you in forever. It's, it's been, been a, a long while. Time. I feel like you've been big time. Again. Yesterday. Oh, oh, yeah. You know, I'm real big time over at the uh, clam chowder. Yeah, uh, yesterday, just, yesterday, Will said, look, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. And I got a picture of a man holding his dick. Mm-hmm. And it was a close-up of the man's pee hole. And he was pulling his pee, p- pee hole apart. Well, he was squeezing I, it. It looked like a little mouth he, scene. I went, oh. I was like, oh. When I saw it, rarely did you, you see a picture. Me. I did. I go, this is what Will sent. <laughs> and I just went, oh. Oh. Now, our mutual friend, Chris D'Elia, woke up this morning. Our good buddy, what? Chris D'Elia. And by this morning, you mean this afternoon. This afternoon. Yes, yeah. yeah. And, he's not waking up and, 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 quite and afternoon I wish yet. people could see what his face looks like, because he's, he's hiding kind of under the covers, and he's just got part of his face exposed. He's yeah. not at home, though. He's doing a show somewhere. I forget. Maybe. But this is what he, this is what he um, basically... He's in bed right now. He sang me a song, and I thought we'd play it. I think good. he'll get a kick good out idea. of it. Good idea. I don't know if I told you this, but I've been uh, singing a lot lately. That sound is in master. And I've been like writing, songwriting and stuff. It's actually been going pretty well. But I wrote this song for you. We're both comedians. We may be laugh. Onward and upward to the good times and the bad. We're both successful. Me, definitely, and you in your own way. (laughs) You're my fucking soldier. What? You're my soldier. When I go into battle... I tell you where to go. Oh, he's the general. You test out all the waters for me. <laughs> oh, you're like a dummy, friend. No. You carry my bags. <laughs> you carry my bags. <laughs> carry my bags. <laughs> no one does or that at the anymore. Airport, carry my airport. bags. <laughs> <The airport. laughs> I feel like he's making that up. I don't think that's a. So that's making the rounds, but uh, no, let me not. know what's up, dude. <laughs> so that's, oh, that's, so that's what I got from Chris that's that I carry his carry bags. bags. That, I, I, there are times when there's no one I'd rather kick in the face harder sometimes than Chris D'Elia. And then that's, you're you're a close second. <laughs> right. no, I feel that that's second. how one, two. That's how America feels about Chris D'Elia. Those yeah. in America who know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of songs, I like to sing a song when I come here, right? Are love you the recording? Hair. I oh, guess. Yeah. We're on, hey, man. Oh, 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 it's just a show that we love a lot. It's a man, the father and the kid, right? No, 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 no. Yeah. no, no. He is the I man, like it. and the other two are not. It's a man, the father no, and the kid. No, 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 I don't like it. One is the man, and the other is the father, and the other is the other guy. No, 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 the kid. <laughs> the man, the child, is a man, the father and the kid. No. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't yeah. like that fucking song. The man, song. the fighter, and the kid no. is brought to you by 10 Minute Podcast. <laughs> what? It's Will Sasso's podcast. Huh? And Brian used to be on it. No, like... <laughs> also brought to you by Clam Chowder, <laughs> no. the health food that nature intended. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> hey, everybody, welcome. <laughs> 
Hey, what's hey, up, hey, 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 ah, You know, I was having some of my uh, some of my uh, fighter in the kid, a man fighter in the kid, brand clam chowder this morning. <laughs> I'm way over here. Boy, it's getting thick. Oh man, it is getting thick. <laughs> yeah. I like to run Abbott Kinney every morning. Abbott Kinney Fight Club. You know, I head over there. I do my run. It's hard. A lot and of it, people and on then the you street. You throw your you throw your chowder up. Yep, I throw my chowder up. I usually got. I'm sweating. I'm stinking. I smell <laughs> like meat. And uh, I'm trying to avoid all the uh, lovely mothers and their uh, pushing carriages and the guys yeah. too. Hey, we're equal opportunity over here. The man, the fighter, and the kid. It's 2016. I'm with her. And uh, tell you what else. You know, I like to head over to Jelena. You know, they got a little thing. You can just go over there. Yeah. You can just get food right out of the window. Really? So Jelena yeah. Takeaway. Jelena Takeaway is what they call it. And I tell you what, I don't sit around in the milk crates in the back. I just ask my good buddy Giuseppe, who works there, and he hands me a cup of flour. I put it in my clam chowder, and I'm on my way. <laughs> By the way, the, the owner of Jelena told us a crazy story. How about the, the owner of Jelena told us a story? Dig this. So Travis. Dig Travis this. Travis Lett, great guy, and a genius when it comes to all, all things food. Played at uh, University of Colorado. Yeah. Not a big deal. Yep, yep. And his girlfriend... Uh, his ex-girlfriend was surfing in Mexico and they'd been broken up for a little bit and he gets a call from a dude who says, listen, motherfucker, I have your, I kidnapped your girlfriend. What? You give me money right fucking now. I want this. And he knew everything about Travis's life. And Broken Travis English. Like, Holy yeah. shit. It's like this cartel guy or whatever has kidnapped my girlfriend. Well, he, he knew, he knew like the restaurants he owns. He knew what cars he drives. He oh knows. He knew where he lived. He knew all this the whole stuff. thing. So Travis like, "Holy shit!" And he goes, "Get to a get to a bank, of Western Union money." He, right he said, now. "I'm part of this cartel. Yeah. You got your girlfriend. We know who you are. We need we you need to wire this money, or we're gonna cut your girlfriend's throat." What? Yeah. What? And his yeah. girlfriend was in Mexico. So Come now on. he's trying to call his girlfriend, but he can't. His ex girlfriend, she's not answering. So now he goes to the bank, and he says, and he, he says, "Keep me on speakerphone." And ask for money. And he writes a note to the teller and says, say I only have $2,000 in my account. He's thinking. Wow. He gets out the two grand. He ends up sending the guy two grand. But then he realizes that he gets a call back from his girlfriend. His girlfriend's like, what? They his hate his girlfriend. Right what do you he want? Goes, what the fuck do you want? He goes, he's like, are you not kidnapped? She goes, I'm not fucked. What are you talking about kidnapped? This guy had done all this research online in Mexico and scammed him into sending him money. Into a fake kidnapping. Wow. He but he said he he knows some guys who are involved in that dark world in the cartel. And yeah. They're here in Los Angeles and they're they're friends of his. And yeah. he called them and they're like, first of all, yeah. if a guy had your girl, he's not gonna ask for five thousand yeah, dollars. Sure. They they don't even fucking look at five thousand dollars. She goes, that was the first thing. Yeah. Other thing is they said the reason they kidnapped her is because she saw something go down. She shouldn't have. He goes. They're not going to call you to try to get money. They just kill her right away. Sure. That'd be the second red yeah. flag. Wow. Because it just doesn't make sense. And then our boy's like, my bad. Yeah, yeah my, my bad. bad. I didn't know the protocol. I made cookies yeah. and bread right. and yeah. great oh, food. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't watched second season of Narcos yet. <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. My bad. Yeah. Pablo. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Unbelievable. Did, did he sound like this? Yes. What? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You see, Pablo. Escobar. Are you, you sound watching? Just like him. Dude, are you watching? Well, that sure, that sure actor am. is fantastic. We need He's to so use good. you. If we ever run a kidnapping scheme, yeah, I want it. you on the phone. You know what, Pablo? Yeah. He doesn't look like Pablo, though, does he? The does actor that plays Pablo is better looking than yeah. Pablo. Yes, Pablo is. And, yeah. and 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 he gained weight for the role, and you know he definitely you his, know he his looks, nose and face doesn't look like him. no Pablo Pablo's Escobar. Me. Yeah, he but looks God, like, he looks like a real drug lord. His pathos. Oh, he's so and he's good. so complicated. I was, I was talking to B yesterday about it. It's weird because you think about how many people Escobar killed, and especially like he so he had, his whole thing was he had the the backing of the public in Colombia, right? They're yeah. like, no, he you know he's basically Robin Hood. He's giving back yeah. to the poor, blah blah. blah. And then when he set that huge bomb off and killed kids in it, then the public even turned on and was like, yeah. fuck this dude. Yes. Wow. And then, but then they show him going through this struggle, and it's weird because you're like, dang, man, poor guy. But then when you think of it, you're like, fuck that guy. Yeah. And the, the worst, second, the are you worst. watching the second season? Oh, yeah, I'm balls yeah, yeah. deep. I have two I'm, episodes left. Oh, okay. I, didn't, I didn't realize I'm how hot through. his wife was until I saw them making out and she was in that dress. Yeah. Uh, but she's, that's but she's, my type. and that, I don't know the names of any of the, uh, the actors on the show. But her name's Tata. Her, Tata, yeah. The the uh, she, but the actress is doing. Uh, she's incredible. Yeah. So in the first season, yeah. she's like this doting wife who is kept in the dark. And in the second season, you see. I mean, they're all the way in the nineties, and she's doing an incredible job of just being so with it. Yes. Right? How, lo how loyal is she? Unbelievable. How how crazy is it to me that 
Like even that doctor who's on uh, Escobar's side, he's down. He's like, I want a gun. I want a patrol, man. I'm, I want to die next to you. It's crazy to me how yeah. loyal they were yeah. to him. He yeah. had this cult of personality. He had this tremendous charisma. And he was able to get people who were lost or who, you know, he was able to get that loyalty. How about his side piece? Even They even kill his side piece. Yeah. The, the, don't, don't, no, no spoilers. Don't, 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 it's not spoiler. a spoiler. This oh, is, is this a season one? No, this is history. Oh, history. Yeah. It's just history. Yeah, I'm, yeah there are I'm no spoilers with the show. There's actually, no, yeah. Because if people are like, how dare you? How dare you tell me Escobar dies? Well, yeah. it's not a spoiler, well, yeah. man. It's, it's history. Yeah. yeah. The went, fuck you mean JFK got assassinated? All right, man. You know what? <laughs> Did no one go to school? The fuck? I, I get those tweets, by the way. You've ruined Narcos for yeah, me. Thanks a lot. Ruined Narcos. Way to go, Shab. Yeah. Or two more seasons, I guess, right? No, but not of Escobar. This would be the last season of Escobar. You yeah. can't do two more seasons of Escobar. Because kind of, yeah. the cartel, uh, once, you get, once they get into Miami, it goes nuts. It goes here, a whole goes to different Mexico, right? Oh, the, the show's going to go into Miami? Yeah, and, and yeah, Mexico. Yeah. That'd be cool. Oh, I, yeah. I really love that show. Well, you, yeah, the, When you think about, like, Escobar kept one up and everything, right? So they... Don't let his family out of Colombia. They keep them kind of as bait to keep Escobar, you know, because yep. sure. there's no negotiating. They just want to kill him, right? Mm -hmm. So they keep the family. And then his side piece goes to do an interview with the with the mom. I don't know if they show us on the show yet or not, but the, the side piece who's uh, a big media lady in Colombia. The, the news reporter. The news yeah. reporter, yeah. yes. Yeah, but don't tell us. What, what is this part? Again, it's, a, it's this history. This isn't it's necessarily, history. Yeah. Yeah, this but isn't necessarily I don't know on the show. It. It's all oh, oh, I, oh, I, got you, I got you. I got you. I got you. So when the the Beppe or whatever the fuck you call him, the the task force team that's searching for him, mm -hmm. when they kill her, that's what sets them off. So even today's world in cartel, they're always one up each other. Who can be nastier? Oy. And it's like Pablo set the standard when he blew up all those innocent people, and yeah. there just happened to be kids around everywhere. So he killed whatever forty, fifty kids Jesus and Christ. girls and blah blah blah. It's nuts, Jesus. man. So he's constantly one up in it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Awesome. And then today's narcos or cartel, I mean, you see him boiling people in acid Ugh. and fucking killing family members. It's literally like, <clears throat> what can we do that's so bad you won't fuck with it's our It's amazing guys. how there are just certain people. It's just that are one, it's just us, like, what else can we do? A it's, ambition, it's, it's, ambition, it's, it's ISIS wrong. too. Like, oh, yeah. I, I was reading this report on uh, like the whole Al Qaeda and ISIS stuff. So, you know the the views on when and Al Qaeda and ISIS knows this. Actually, ISIS is kind of on the forefront of social media with this stuff. Yeah. How they're recruiting all these people. When they show a video of them decapitating someone, the views it gets is in. Yeah. You're talking thirty million can a I, day. Can I tell you the the horrible? It's it's a, it's sort of a point that he made, but also an anecdote that Tommy, my good buddy Tommy Blacha. Uh, who's on the 10 minute podcast? 10 Brian minute to, podcast. Uh, Tommy guys, has this. What? Go ahead. No, yeah. So he had this. Uh, he, had, he he was okay. So Tommy Blotcher, he's a writer. He's one of the funniest guys. And he goes, uh, he's in this meeting, and they were like, uh, you know, we want to, whoever he was having the meeting with, you know, we want you to create, we want you to write like a, a vi we want this campaign to go viral. We want a viral video. And he goes, and this is what he said. He goes, you can't, don't say, we want to make a viral video. You can't predict what goes viral, first of all. He, yeah. goes, he goes, second of all, nothing's viral anymore. This is Tommy. This is, I love what Tommy's he said the here. best. He goes, he said to these people, he goes, look, you can't predict what's going to be viral. Anything's viral. He goes, also, the best the best producers of viral content right now is ISIS. Correct. And even they're not getting the hits they <laughs> used to. The decapitations aren't working anymore. Now they're burning, uh, now they're drowning guys in a cage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, they 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 step, like the yeah, next level. Like, like people are like, all right, decapitate. What yeah. else you got? Yeah, what they're else like, you got? Fuck. <laughs> and there's some marketing guy at ISIS like, isn't that true? Yeah. <laughs> all right, hear me out here. What if we film us yeah. just filling the cage up with water? <laughs> it's different. It's I like so, it. it never, I like it. Yeah. I like it. We're that. all getting so immune. There's a We're guy so who used to work at Coca-Cola named Rex, who's like, "Hey guys, I got," and he wears like a, you know like a sport coat with the sleeves hiked up, and he's like, "Just, just hear me out here. <laughs> yes, what is the next idea for? We are trying to solve their head with uh, sword. Nobody care. Okay, uh, so here's what I'm thinking." Now, I, this is going to be a little... I pulled a little bit from the medieval world, you know, with the torture devices and that sort of thing. But what, did they, what didn't they have in the medieval world? 
uh, horses. No, they had those. <laughs> uh, definitely had those. Medicine, medicine. Uh, well, they kind of had medicine. Uh, electricity. They didn't have oh, electricity. Uh, yeah, electricity. Uh, and then they show the thing, and they take one of the. Do you have anybody left? And they thing, and they throw them in the thing, and then they burn them. Oh, look, look, but all right. Anyway, <laughs> it goes <laughs> viral. It, yeah, goes, it goes viral. And it goes viral. And it goes viral. Just give me get some porn out of here. No, but they're they're, they're talking uh, about how it, it is crazy how those those vicious videos of the. T- decapitation all that stuff it goes so viral because they're saying it's like it's almost in our blood like it's in our genes to look at that barbaric shit even though you don't want to see it i can't watch it i I just can't i I will your balls deep in it no 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 you love that shit yeah there's nothing i love more than you take cock to hand and you watch it (laughs) Uh, i'll tell you what i draw will jacks off the faces of death (laughs) (laughs) well faces of death is a classic classic actually one time when i was a teenager a buddy of mine rented faces of death it said from, 18 plus on it. Yeah, you get back. it from the video store. Yes. And we I, I'll never forget it because These kids are too young. It, it really it ruined me. We ate Kentucky fried chicken and watched and then we're just You looking guys could at, eat during that? Well, no, we stopped because we're yeah. like looking at chicken bones and what and going, What? I know we're we're fucked up 17 year olds, yeah. but what are we doing? Yeah. I will draw this line in the sand. I <laughs> this is absolutely true. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh because somebody has to be for moral decorum in, yes. uh, in the podcasting world. Um, I've never seen a decapitation because I know I will never forget what that looks like. It. And, and I've heard people talk about uh, it the, who, who have seen it. But I did absolutely watch uh, Saddam Hussein uh, being hung. I watched so that. Many I watched that. Because we're in a weird point in technology where you can watch that. Yeah. I don't feel like I deserve, I think it's really horrible karma to watch someone dying, some innocent sure. person dying or anything like that. Yeah. There's all sorts of reasons to not watch that. It also that. fucks you up mentally. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, but to see something that like, you know, a hundred years ago and arguably a hundred years in the future, you're not going to be able to see video of a dictator being hung, you know, in the future because the internet, in my opinion, won't be the Wild West anymore. Mm. Things will be... They're going to start controlling it. Yes, it'll be controlled. It's the, it's the future. Right. And you, you already see, to, like, even YouTube's starting to create some standards. Yes. Yeah. Well, you'll also... to create reins. Yeah. Right. You'll be able to... The software will be able to detect, you know, will be able to detect the, like, literally go out with the, you know, I don't know how the mumbo-jumbo works, but I think the word algorithm would probably yeah. be used. Sure, sure. Algorithm. algorithm. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, algorithm. Yeah, yeah you, can. Algorithm. you can. You can. You can yeah, say algorithm. algorithm. No, but... You know, to detect literally the code of video to say if this if this thing is appearing we don't show it. They right. have that now. Sure, they're doing it now. And to Although facial recognition, but what about be like they're, they're doing no it Saddam now. Hussein or whatever. You, but you can also you could even it's a little weird, but like let's say you're you're super into like Amy Winehouse or right. or Kurt Cobain. They you can or even like see the cock. the the morgue pictures. Like uh, they have. Oh, the, everything. No. Yeah. Really? everything really yeah. oh, everything I don't, and i think I what think about the, future, the dark web what is that I, I i've heard that the dark web is real i mean it, it is well, it's, where you can well, get drugs you, you can get everything do you want to get on this we, we can wanna... definitely talk about the dark web if you'd want i think no, we should do it changed. offline though uh we should probably do it offline i'll give a little teaser for those uh listeners who have subscribed to the fighter and the kid vip yeah which means they will be able to listen for four hours after this podcast to me talk about the dark web it's gonna cost me. It's ten ninety nine a day. This that is seems a lot. Of Brendan money. set up. Brendan set it up. Ten ninety nine a day. Or you could just listen to the ten minute podcast. Where's that money? Podcast, about on there absolutely. It's free there. That's free. It's free for free. I will barely get it, but also Chad Culchin's on ten minute podcast gotcha. now a lot, gotcha. so he'll you, definitely be talking about dark web. Sure. But I will tell and you. And by ten ninety nine, you mean one thousand ninety nine dollars. If you're not subscribed, yes, it's okay. one thousand ninety nine dollars per hour, and it's a four hour show. Okay, that's a lot of money. It's a little steep, but I will say this. With regard to dark web. Drop some knowledge on the dark web We form. teased it a little earlier with, you know, your friend who went to the bank and pushed a note that he wrote Correct. in paper. Sure. With this, this fellow who figured this is a good idea. In the dark web, <laughs> you know, body parts are being traded. What do you want? You is want that a kidney? Right? Drugs. I guess, yeah. Look, Dr- you might, you, any they, drugs, pharmacy, yeah, dr- drugs Bitcoin. For, they use Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. Y- you know what? I've you know what I've always hated about you? What? Your me? lips. Your what? lips. Let's get you some new lips. No. Yeah, yeah man. We'll get you some lips from China. They're harvesting organs. I don't want uh, any particularly new ones. the people who practice Falun Gong meditation. Okay. Because of course the red government there is intimidated by you, people with you free are, will. You are you are correct on you, that. You, on the, <laughs> Falun for, Gong. For reals though, on the dark web you can get Name anything, Brian. Oh, I know. Any subscriptions? I, I've, I've any, read a bunch any of stuff. Prescriptions? On it. Any uh, human trafficking? But how do I get on? What do you want? A young blonde Russian? Yeah. 
dark yeah. web. But yeah. how do I get on it? You got to get a Mac, dude. Enough with this PC, you know? Bro, I have a Mac. Oh, okay, how sorry. Do you, how do you just get on the dark web? Just download the app web? Dark Web. Yeah, you just need to go get the app. <laughs> go so find that. The, the icon is a little black thing. And but there white, are, it says there dark are web. people on the dark web. I wouldn't yeah. even know how to get on you know the web. You, you don't know how to check your DMs alone. You don't need to be on the dark web. Yeah, I don't, right? No, yeah. you would get... I'll get lost in the rabbit hole? Well, you'd go down there with guys... Guys! Some guy on the dark web would be like, I'm your biggest fan. Meanwhile, if I have a Kenny scan, drop some knowledge on me. like, I'll be right there. And you get there and kidnap you. Yeah. And then Guys, you're, then, I, you're, then you're sex slave. Salt and Straw has a secret like yeah. compartment. Then you're sex slave. Yeah. 50 oh, year old Brian sex would slave. love that. Guys, I'm in a gimp costume. I don't know what's going on. I'm in a, uh, I hear footsteps. You want to know how deep the dark web runs? Yeah. On it, probably <laughs> sells clam chowder on the dark web. I don't know, man. <laughs> That's how I'm telling you. On it black. <laughs> on it black. I yeah. know the owners of just clam I've never chowder. Heard them mention I, that. But they're not going to say it to you. Okay. I know they're all about health and stuff, but you can't how do talk you about sell it. health products? You can't I, talk about you it. You have to promote uh, the unhealth. I don't know. Without the dark, there is no light. Have you ever seen Star Wars? Sure, I have. Uh, I mean, I, I guess know, you're making right? sense. You, you it's try- Twinkies by On It. <laughs> hey, B, are you trying to test that black belt out in a street fight? You're looking oh, for a street league? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black web. Yeah. Dude. Dark web. Yeah. I call it the black web. He calls it the black Hashtag web. Hashtag black yeah. Once you get black once you, web. Once you get deeper into the dark web, it becomes the black it becomes web. It's black just black web, web to me. I'm yeah. so familiar. God, you guys know a lot of shit. I don't want to say this out loud, but you guys ever heard of the midnight web? <laughs> no. <laughs> the midnight web? The midnight web. What is it, man? It's only on midnight. It's dark. <laughs> it's just at <laughs> midnight, by the way. Yeah. It, gets, it goes away dark. one. Yeah. One minute. Yeah. You can be on it for one minute. Yeah. One and minute. 1201. On. And 1201. Nah. It's yeah, just a highlight up. of everything I go on, going on. I just bu- one yeah, highlight. I buy as much on it clam chowder as I can. <laughs> In one minute. Yeah. 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 Just <laughs> gang, 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 yeah. gang. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, 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 bye. And there's a little window open with Saddam Hussein just getting hung over and over again. He gets stopped. <laughs> <laughs> wink, 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 wink. You know what? I, th- I think we can watch the Saddam Hussein get murdered because, or the way he was hung sure. and blah, 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 because you know what horrible things he did. Yeah. Yes, it's almost exactly. like, fu- that's what you get, man. Yeah. Yeah. You, that, you know what's weird to me is when you think about, like, you think of uh, Al Capone, you think of El Chapo, yeah. you think of Escobar. Any of these guys who go into that dark, dark business, they might be set for 20, 30 years. But it never Ever works out it never for those works big out. time guys. Yeah. In that, the, that movie, we know yes. how it ends. I know. Yes. Isn't it weird? We had this weird thing. We have a, a real condition on human life, which we should in a way, in, in terms of like, for example, if you have, if, if Michaela needs a kidney transplant or a serial killer needs a tr- kidney transplant, it's kind of a no-brainer. All of us would be right. like, sorry, serial killer. Yes. You're definitely last, last, last yep. in line. You know, so we, we have, we definitely have... Based on your behavior and based on what you've done, we have all kinds of conditions. However, I guess morally, let's just say the serial killer is, you know, he's got a sick brain. His his amygdala amygdala isn't fully developed. He can't feel or whatever the case. Still got to destroy him. Well, I agree with you. I agree. But but is it Intense if you prove that he's got a brain issue, is that punitive? (laughs) And and if there is an available kidney, where do you draw the line? I don't. I, I, don't, I wouldn't to, give it to if him. If you murdered someone, absolutely not. Yeah, I, and, but I think with who, the I Saddam Hussein, like I can watch a hanging, right? But I couldn't if they whatever dropped them in a vat of acid. Yeah, there you go. Or if they cut his throat, right. I couldn't watch it. That's, like, but, like, that, but that's like, like, where like cool. I remember being around the water cooler, to for lack of a better term, the water cooler when me and my brother working at rental all seasons rental. We'd uh-huh. like rent out party supplies. A terrible job. And on we're on lunch break and everyone was around the shitty laptop and they were watching. It was one of the the reporters. Might have been Daniel Pearl when he got his neck cut uh, off. Yeah, yeah. I remember I'd never watch. I don't. I can't watch that. No. I can't watch two girls in one cup no. where the fuck I can't I watch, watch any of that stuff right. I'll throw up like and it. it literally ruins my day I also feel like it's, it's disrespectful to that guy's life yeah but it, absolutely. It, it, Daniel yeah. Pearl that, thing was Daniel Pearl thing was so viral I remember sure. walking up like what do you guys watch and just seeing oh, him like no, that yeah. and I was scarred man sure, sure. And I, I was so it's so depressing I, it, it's so depressing also I remember looking at the other guys and being like, what the fuck's wrong with you guys? Yeah, you How can you that. watch that and then eat your fucking <laughs> because Arby's I, sandwich? Because I don't Kentucky think that they are, because yeah. I don't think they're personalizing the fact that that is somebody's 
son, right. somebody's father, somebody's husband. Yeah. And it's so disrespectful in a way to make that your entertainment. And But uh, most people I, I, would agree on yeah, that. And yeah. that is inbred in us. Most people would give the kidney, you know, to Michaela yes. versus the versus the, the serial killer. And people want to see, if, if you're burning Saddam Hussein <clears throat> in acid, that's not going to be fun to watch because that's a human body. It's not burned. like that. Some people yeah. can. But to see him hang is another thing. And I think that most people just sort of instinctually agree on this, which is why we don't need laws or religion. No, no, now, now hold on. Now. Now you're missing. No, now, no, no, me, now, no, hold on. It's it's standard, standard, hold on. Hold on. Just hear me out. Now, hold on. <laughs> just hear me out. <laughs> the, the truth is. It's like is, the view in here. The, just the, hear me out. But the truth is these things are very interesting to me because like in, in what was that book that we read um, about how torture was something that you brought the family to watch if somebody was a bad person in with. Europe in the in medieval times. Yeah. If you were somebody who was considered a heretic or somebody who had done something bad, you would be tortured. You're talking in the about Braveheart? Way. The little kids are standing. Yeah, out. you'd be That's tortured. Right, the yeah. kid in Braveheart. Yeah, you, talking about Braveheart. <laughs> you had to be purified, and and a lot, of, a lot of standards. And the yeah, a lot of standards were you've got to suffer for one hour. Now, even if you pass out, the clock stops. Yeah, you have to be awake for an hour God, of torture God. before we. So they would do crazy shit to you think uh, about it right well, they still do stonings well but but see what i'm saying East. is that the united yeah. but 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 be as we evolved mm -hmm. as civilizations mm -hmm. um there became something in law called cruel and unusual punishment yeah. and there were standards against doing things like torturing somebody yeah, they, even no matter be. how bad they were and though, but but you know <laughs> Why are you telling me well, what, I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what i'm saying is that that's that those standards are so fucking important those debates are so important because a lot of times with someone like saddam hussein there are a lot of people that would like to burn him throw him in acid for all the shit he did Pablo yeah. he died. look at look at gaddafi yeah. Yeah. Have you seen? I watched oh, that one that, too. That, the I people got a hold too. of him in his yes. eyes. He was yes. like, he stuck, stuck out the pist back, pistol up his ass. Well, well, he was already gone basically after that. Yeah. But they were dragging him basically to the city by his neck. Well, the, the thing yeah. that was the most fascinating <clears throat> part of Saddam Hussein's hanging video to me, and I hate that we're going. <laughs> it's, it's people are going to be searching it. But listen to me, honestly, the most fascinating human part of it was he was allowed to speak and he said a few things. Gangster. He was still gangster. You know what yes. he said. But as soon as, no, I don't. I just, rem I just remember him saying Allah. And as soon as he said you know, the name of God, no, the, the other, the soldiers who used to be on his side, the people that were like, you know, there. So go to hell. They were, they were like, oh, Allah. Like, you're, you, now you're talking about Allah. You know, it was very interesting to hear these people go like, don't you bring up, don't you bring God. How they they were saying they yeah. were saying to him, what they were saying to him is go to hell. And they were being, you know, they were saying die, basic fuck you and all that. And the guy, one of the executioners or the guy who was put in the hood said, guys, have some respect. The man's about to die. Mm. And and uh, apparently from what I had read, this is, I don't, I don't speak Arabic, but apparently what Saddam said, I know he said this during the trial, but he also apparently said essentially this. He said, you're not men. Ooh. I am I am a lion and you are monkeys in a, in trees. Monkeys always stay from the trees and shout at lions. <laughs> you know, he was to the end he was sort of this you know, he was a real fucking And so it was okay, kill him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but he, you know, he, and and you can see it in his trial when they were saying stuff and he said he said to his co he said comrade you know, you're a lion. Don't let these monkeys and trees. Interesting. There, there's a great. There's a great uh, bad it's, guy. It's kind of like Narcos. It's I, I want to say it's like an eight part series on HBO about Saddam. It's yeah. fascinating, man. Yeah. He used to have his own citizenry. So if if there was somebody who was a political dissident in another country, mm -hmm. he would have he'd have your family in Iraq, and he'd say, "You're going to go on. You're you're the living there, or you're on vacation, or whatever." You're going to kill these. Somebody's going to help you with this, but you're going to kill your friend. They trust you. You're going to invite them to dinner. You're going to go to their house for dinner, and you're going to kill them. Jeez, so what happened crazy, was Iraqis didn't trust other Iraqis, and they didn't trust Iraqis who were visiting a lot of times. Oy. And they just would be like they'd meet them in neutral settings. And don't you have a, don't they have a rule B where you if, let's say Saddam hates Brian Callum, but he invites you into his house? Isn't there a rule where he doesn't kill you in the house? No, that's Pashtunwali. That's that's the Pashtun. The Arabs have always been incredibly hospitable. The idea was you know when you walked if you were a stranger they would invite you in and stuff. Yes, there was yeah, a not so much of the women. Yeah. 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 But but the the 
uh, the the, like a warm the hand in, in, in the Pashtun culture. <laughs> for no, actually, Ray yeah, Rice actually, like I'll move there. Yeah. <laughs> no, but but the Pashtun culture <laughs> in Afghanistan that the, it's called Pashtunwali. So if you take somebody in, even if they're an enemy, that's what happened to that. Apparently, that Navy SEAL um, uh, Marcus Luttrell. Are oh, you talking about uh, lone survivor? Yeah, he was kept, and they wouldn't let the other guys kill him because said we he's our responsibility. Oh wow, yeah, he's our responsibility, he and we're we're going to take wow. care of him. Yeah, yeah, and they it's wouldn't. There's a there's a really strong tradition of that. Yeah, wow. the Pashtun are a straight up patriarchal warrior culture. Very fascinating, uh, but, but they uh, are they have their yeah. strong standards. Yeah, and I that's do, I, why I, Brian is voting for Trump. I'm sorry. To I did not. I'm not sorry. voting for Trump. I know we don't want to get too political. I'm not I'm voting saying. for Trump. You son of a bitch. I can't wait for you guys to watch the new seasons of Narcos to see me playing General Norman Schwarzkopf in <laughs> I, uh, I halfway through season three. Um, wow. Then, yep. He got I didn't heavily know you involved got that in part. the, the, the wow, drug trade. Man. Yeah, I did. I'm, Can you give I'm, us a teaser? I'm General Norman Schwarzkopf, <laughs> and by gum, I'm going to kill these cartel sons of who's whatever's. That's really good. Yeah, wow, very man. Much. You know I'm known it for makes sense uh, you get the a role. lot of impersonations. Yes. Are. My Norman Schwarzkopf is among my best. By garn it, consarn it, by <laughs> gum. Like so good. Yep. And I just so yeah. good. Will you also? I saw on your. I think it was your Instagram. You also watched Stranger Things. Oh, I loved Me Stranger too. Things. I'm almost done with it. I got one more episode. Watch it. I've gotten very into it now. Yeah, it's you, really. It cool. Took me a while. It's for sure, doing season two. They oh, absolutely. They yeah, they're doing that. They're working on it right now. They they said that there was all sorts of stuff they wanted to put in the first season that they just didn't have time for, and it goes. It also more. got nixed. Yeah, and yeah, and it goes more with season two. Yeah. Who are these guys? They see, came out of nowhere. Did you they're, see they're, the they kids? They do like these weird like B movies and stuff. Yes, and then wow. they just. Uh, look, I think that show, uh, it, oh, that show is something else. I mean, yeah. it really, so creative. Yeah, it's so creative. There's so many levels to it that it makes everything else look like. Did shit. you see the little girl? I forget where she's from, but Eleven. She went on because now they're making the rounds, right? Because now yeah. it's like a, I mean, the show's blowing up. Yeah, and which is weird. It took so long, but. They're on Jimmy Fallon. She starts rapping on Jimmy Fallon. What? Super talented. Oh, really? Crazy talented. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. She's, she's British or something. Right? Uh, Australian or yeah, something like that, right? She speaks with something with an accent. Yeah, she has a little bit of an accent. That clam wow. chowder over there t- is completely different. No. It's no. not white. No, it's a red, it's a red chowder. It's a, yeah, it's it's a, a red tomato sauce. sauce. It's, it's a tomato. It's a tomato. Thing. Thing. Yeah, it's tomato. It's a tomato sauce. Yeah. Mo- yeah. Movie, movie fat. Or can you name this movie? Uh, knocks on the door and he goes, uh, "What's the password?" And he goes. Chowder is what color? White or red? Anyone? No. Anyone? Hold on. Um, what's the chowder? Comedian's the main uh, role in it. Godfather. No. Is a comedian's, comedian's main role the main role? Godfather too. We're close, fellas. Uh, Adam Sandler. Nope. A comedian is the main guy. Comedian. Um, uh, oh. Uh, uh, what other comedians yeah. have been in movies? There haven't Roy, been Roy, many. Uh, it's uh, Schneider. Rob Roy Scheider. You were about to say Roy Scheider. Roy Scheider. Rob Schneider. <laughs> Jim Carrey. Ace Ventura. Jim Carrey. Oh. Ace Ventura. There, there it is. Oh, that's. By the way, that first one. I don't care what anybody says. One of the greatest movies of all time. Oh yeah. First and second. <clears throat> first <throat> and second. He's were fucking ridiculous. Genius. When did he come out of the uh, rhino butt? In the second one. Second one. There you go. God. Somebody. Ace Ventura. When nature calls. Yeah. Part yeah. two. You want to hear my, wanna hear my Jim so Carrey? Love to hear it. All righty then. Oh, that's Norman. Dude, no, that's, that's, Norman, that's Norman Schwarzkopf. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody stop me, right? <laughs> Norman, no, that's, it's heavy Norman Schwarzkopf. Yeah. Well, I'm in character for okay. Norman Schwarzkopf. Oh, okay. So when I do that, oh. yeah. You stay in character. <laughs> yeah, I'm really mad. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like doing it. I like drawing my O's out. Oh. <laughs> the most that condescending thing yeah, you can try- do. Try that sometime yeah. with somebody. That's when you when you really want to drive the point home. You look at the size of the restaurant you're in when someone's blowing hot gas, and you what you want to do is project that O to every single person in the restaurant. <laughs> so they hear I did that to my dad. My dad didn't know what the fuck to do with me. He said something, and I was just in a mood. Yeah. And I, he was talking. He was he was in a serious kind of a bad mood. And he and I said, "What what does that what does that mean? What what are you saying?" And he, and he repeated. And I go, "Oh, <laughs> don't do that to Big Mike. Big Mike, can slap your face." Dude, he he, had, he looked at me like he wanted to punch me in the face. He was so mad. My sister was laughing so fucking hard. And at my wedding, my dad was in a, had lost half his money on the stock market. He oh was in goodness. a very bad mood at my money. wedding. Yeah, it right. got really bad. For and sure, so, don't check the stock market the day of your son's uh, wedding. Oh, dude, he was he was in the most Maybe take one the of the most sour moods Mike? I've ever seen him in. On your wedding? Yep. And God I damn was, it, Big I was Mike. making my boys laugh so hard because I was replacing the A of every word with um, I. And I was like, have you guys met my fither? 
Uh, he's a, a grit guy, man. He, and my dad didn't really know what I was doing, oh, so, but he was getting so st- dumb. It's he was, so are you in fun. fourth grade? Yeah. 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 We're how, all how, how are you? How are you? How yeah. are you? Hey, how what? are you? How my dude, you? my friends were like, it, it my, wasn't that Jimmy your dad Burke, lost Jimmy a gajillion dollars. Said his son's acting like an asshole. Oh, dude, my did Jimmy, you think that put him in a Jimmy bad Berg mood? Jimmy Berg and Jeremy McFadden were like this, going. <laughs> and my father was looking at me. He couldn't quite prove what I was doing. Yeah. Oh man, he was he was fucking losing his mind. Oh jeez, that's a lot of fun, you know. Will did I love you? stories? What <laughs> Sorry. I love stories no, no. like that. Yeah. If you <laughs> want to annoy somebody, yeah. just just talk a little louder than you normally would, yeah. and they won't figure out what you're doing right away. Just kind of talk. Yeah. My buddy did that to his uncle Artie, who was same thing. Jimmy Burke going, you know, Artie. At the end of the day, Uncle yeah. Artie, uh, and and Uncle Artie goes, I can. Hear. He starts going. He starts looking going. He's seventy six. He, oh, he goes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going, yeah. and he's going, yeah. yeah. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the Yankees game, and he goes, and he turns and he goes, the fuck is Dude, he? I would just say, shut fish the fuck mouth. Up. This guy's a fish mouth. I'm gonna punch him in the face. <laughs> that fish. is so annoying. It is annoying as hell. Yeah. Will you? Did you? Uh, me, Brian talked about this a little bit, but the Mad TV reunion, you were involved in that, right? Yeah. What exactly yeah. is going on there? Uh, the show's been on the air for like uh, five, like four or five weeks But now. you just did like a one-off? I did, I like, did a, like, yeah, I, did, I went there like three times. I did like, uh, so, yeah, I did like a few characters. I did a, a few different episodes. Old school characters? Or yeah, new? old old stuff. And then I did a uh, thing with Bobby Lee that we just kind of came, you know, we did out of nowhere. He's hilarious. Sketch. Yeah, he's funny. How many people are involved? Is it like Keen Peel are still there? Uh, the whole Keegan, crew? Keegan came back and did something, I think. I'm not sure. Myself, Nicole Sullivan, uh, Bobby Lee, Alex Borstein, Mo Collins, Deborah Wilson, Ari Spears, and Dang. I think that's it. It was fun though. Good huh? group. Good yeah. to be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a lot of. It was a. Yeah, it was. Well, those things are a little weird, right? It's like it's almost like high school reunions. It was the new cast is is very funny. They're they're all and they're super sweethearts. They're very nice to each other, which is good to see. You know. Back when you were on the show and I was on the uh, show, it wasn't that nice. It was something else when yeah. you were you there. Got, it was competitive. Oh, oh, when he was there, it was wow. insane. Like this, wow. the stories so? that I heard from. Dude, I, how so? I, I well, you know, you know me well, right? Yeah. And you know how long my fuse is. Like yeah. I, I have a long fuse. Yeah, super long fuse. And it's I'll just say that lady, I. Yes. Yeah, I'll just say that it's uh, very hard it's to wrap. Very hard know. to get me mad. Yeah. I mean, it's very hard it's to get really me mad. Really hard. I mean, to take things personally for no, me. No, you don't. It's really something else. Yeah. yeah. Well, you I, and I got him mad once. Yeah, we did at the same yeah, time. Yeah, but it, that you was really even did. that had less to do with me. Yeah. It, it, oh, no, it, I understand. Yeah. And also by the uh, by the afternoon of that same day, you were cool. Yeah, you were cool. Yeah. I would have been. I would have held a grudge like a fucking elephant. Don't kill my brother. I, don't stay I mad. just don't stay no, mad. literally ten minutes later. Ah, it's kind of funny yeah, though. It's all good, yeah. man. <laughs> Giving yeah. you props on something. And to get it was me, actually really creative yeah. between you and Will. And right. And to get you me guys just mad, keep all the money from that show on the spot. Sure. Ooh, really difficult. So what show. happened? I, I, I mean, I, I, I even reticent to say this, but I reticent to say this, but um, I think I, be, I believe I threatened to throw one cast member out the window. I think you've told I, me this story. And I have yeah. meant what it. did it? What did it though? Uh, be? Just being so rude. So to, rude. But, but to it, me, it's, to are writers. you guys in the writers' room? Where is it's a uh, sketch? These were both times when I was trying to do the, when we were trying to pitch a show. That I was trying to pitch a sketch. A sketch to yeah, my, and, and to people the staff. were being so rude. But they were also so rude to the staff. They, they, everybody, a lot of people, including myself, had problems. We were all fucking a mess. And then another person, I said, I threatened to essentially go to war with. I said, I'll go to war with you, and I'll make you cry every fucking day. For <laughs> and I've never liked that. I can't but, even imagine. And, I can't even say that. And I, I, love, I, I loved. Did all anyone of say? Did he say go to war? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. But I, I lost my temper three times publicly. Amazing. And I was justified. Yeah. Now. They're all good people. I, I'm, you know, and I Typical felt bad Brian. right away. Yeah. But, but having said that, to get me to that point, yeah. I had never been around that kind of energy. Did, did I'd you, never been around that kind of the sour, same? sort of competitive, but more importantly, just very dark, very talented people. But, but There's there was just they were not nice happy? to. Me. I'll happy. tell you. I'll tell you what. What's uh, your deal with? Well, it, Will? you know, some of the stories. And I that love I heard, all of them, by the way, to this day. Yeah. Well, see, but that's the thing. Everyone, whenever the alums see each other, it's like, hey, what's up? Because we're yeah. older and it doesn't matter yeah. anymore. Yeah. Egos like, are it's gone. Nice. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. 
Um, I heard a story from the only name I'll mention in this story is Nicole Sullivan because she was because God bless Nicole and I love her. She's the best and one of the funniest people in the world. I love her too. Yeah, and so Nicole was there from the very beginning. I came in the third season and Nicole's like, "Oh, you have no idea." And she yeah. told me a story about and this wasn't Brian, but one of the one of the guys literally called her the c word in front of. The, I remember the that. I remember that. Producers. I was there. Yeah. Were you? Oh, yeah. Amazing. And the, so someone got into it. And, and also the funny thing is you're getting into a fight over a skit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's personal, day, isn't it? A yeah. little bit. It's, it's more than personal, dude. It gets Because you're you're up there. You've written something or you have an idea and you're up there you trying to pitch it. it. Yeah. But not only that, whether it, if, it, if, it go, if it goes well, it goes on the air yeah, and it's taking you a lot of work. And yeah. I'm not, I wasn't very good. I did. I came with no experience. So and it's it's a little nerve wracking when people are literally laughing and talking about how bad it is behind your back and you can hear that. Yeah, it's um, it's yeah. it's like guys. I, I, and even I, that I could forgive. It was I, I read would the get mad. I read the uh, Saturday Night Live twenty five years or whatever it is or yeah. fifty years or the fuck that book is. And they 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 have Chris Rock, they have David Spade, Adam Sandler, they have all the guys talking about their basically them when they they would have sketch and stuff like that. And Chris Rock does not say nice things, man. Look, he was like, I I would write this shit. And they some guys if it if it wasn't have to do with me being black something like that they won't put it on and he just got Amazing. sick of it and then he also talks about how um, I think it was oh Damon Wayne you know Damon Wayne yeah, yeah he was on the show yeah. yeah he was on the show and left yeah, yeah. oh did he leave he he actually he had a sketch he pitched they took it but they completely changed it and he goes. Well, no, let me do this character. I'll be a gay cop. It's going to be hilarious. They're like, no, no, you're just a black guy and you're a cop. He's like, that's not funny. That's not what I wrote. They're like, doesn't matter. This is what we're doing. He goes, okay. He didn't like that the way they were treating me anyways. He didn't think they were doing enough stuff for black people and stuff right. like that. If you're black, you were getting put in back of the line. Right. So he goes, okay, cool. We can do that, Lauren. Goes on there dressed as his gay cop self. Amazing. Destroys the bit. Goes out and Lauren goes, we have to fire you, man. He goes, no shit. See you later. Walks off. Amazing. And then it's I guess, live. Bye. Yeah, live. Bye. See ya. And then everyone else, I guess, was kind of talking shit about him. And Lauren's like, don't get it twisted. That guy's going to be very, very successful with or without us. And obviously, it's Damon Wayne's one on dude. See, crazy the, shit. In Saturday, living color, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, Saturday Night Live is, is, is a very different animal than, than Mad TV for How two so? reasons. Well, number one, it's live. Yeah. Uh, well, three, really. I mean, that'd it's be, also that'd the, be an hour and a half. Thing. Well, the, also, the, the fact that just the. the, the the tenure of the show. I mean, it's just there's incredible. history. Yeah. There's I mean, history the, and there's a standard. The incredible, incredible history. Of course, that go that should go without saying. But the two other major differences are, it's live and the way it's run. And I've talked to a lot of people from Silent Live, actors and writers who yeah. are just like what their stories boot camp. Yeah, they make Navy they seals. make Mad TV uh, look like look yeah. very um, very calm by comparison. That's what they say on there. Like even in that book, they talk because about the grind. Is, everyone is pitted against each yeah. other there, and, and at Mad TV, that's the environment he. Want it. Lauren yes. Michaels and wanted it. And it works. It does work. For it's, not, it may not be fun, but it, it fucking it What we're going to say about Mad TV, though? It drives people crazy. Yes. Uh, at Mad TV, that was done to an extent. Uh, I think a, a lot of the problems with the show were, were at, at times people didn't step in and say, Wait a minute! You guys are fighting. Why are you fighting? We all gotta get along. What the fuck's let's matter with you? Let's figure this out. Yeah. If anyone else would, I mean, just be like, sit down. Let's figure it out. But um, at the same time, you lose comedy when that's the case. I mean, mm -hmm. we would do such incredibly stupid things all the time. I mean, did I ever tell you the bit? I mean, this is insane. If if, if I did this in 2016, you would be like, what? We Deborah Wilson and I never tell you about the, one of the bits that Deborah and I had. No. It was insane. Deborah, uh, for those who don't know, is black black woman. Talented, so, so talented, fucking just talented. On another we planet. called her money, dude. Yeah, she could do anything yeah. at any time. She's incredible. I, I rarely worked with somebody who's that powerful. She, yeah, she's powerful. And so, so we used to do. We, yeah, we used to do a bit just behind the scenes where I was a guy in the KKK and Deborah was my black girlfriend, <laughs> and she would cr climb up on me and go, "Daddy, I love you, Daddy." <laughs> and I'd be sitting in an armchair, and there'd be like a new cast member, you know, like Stephanie Weir, like mixing coffee, going, "What are they? What <laughs> you can't what?" And she would crawl up on my leg Daddy, I love, and I'd go get away from me you dirty n-word <laughs> n-word n-word now I don't let me just say I don't believe that I should be saying that word is that going a little out? yeah you don't 
But here's Dave Deborah. Chappelle would do that. <laughs> well, yeah, Chappelle kind of did. Yeah. And I, I, he happens yeah. to be African American. Yeah, he also. sure is. So <laughs> I would, I would say, I would say, get off of me, you N word. And there's Aries, you know, all, enjoying oh, it. Fuck. And but, you know, Phil Lamar, maybe not so much. I love <laughs> Phil, but you know, I love Phil. Be, I can see Phil going. <laughs> Phil went to Yale. I yeah. can see Phil being like. Hmm. Yeah. That's a hilarious <laughs> skit, though. Phil, yeah. by the way, Phil, you want to talk about talented? Oh, Phil just Lamar so talented. is fucking. I still, I call level. him Captain. He's, God, he's he's the captain. God, he's amazing, yeah. dude. And so Deborah's, he's mind blowing. Deborah's climbing up my leg. Oh, Daddy, I love. Get away from me, you dirty n word, n word, n word. <laughs> and then she climbs up on me. She simulates getting me excited yeah. through my pants. She simulates pulling my member out of said pants. Yeah inserting it into her and riding. She's pretending yeah. we're simulating <laughs> yeah, sex. sex. And she's sitting and she's sitting on me and I'm in an armchair. I said, yeah, daddy, I love... And you know, Deborah's nuts, right? Yeah. So she's grabbing herself yeah. and her boobies and this and that. Yeah. Dad, daddy, I love... Oh, shut up, you dirty... Like, <laughs> while he's having sex, he's hard and in spite of it, he's still racing. <laughs> but so he's just... Weird. She's so hot, he yeah. can't not fuck her. Yeah. And then at which point, I, you know, this character, it's yeah. a character, everybody, climaxes... He goes, because she's like, I love you, I love you. And he goes, uh, uh, I love you. It's the only time he can say it is when he's coming. <laughs> and then I just shove she, her off. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out, you dude. And we're done, we're done. And she, Deborah's such an amazing physical comedian. She like rolls across the room <laughs> and then comes back to me. And we're both all post coital, like, Dad, Demo, I hate you. I hate you. And this was every day. It's we hilarious. Would do, you never get tired of that in bed. So that, you can't, I would never get tired. You of that. can't. There was no line. We would just say because it's comedy. It's comedy. Oh, and by the way, you're not a racist, and right. it's comedy. That's right. And and, and nowadays, obviously, you right. would you wouldn't do that. But, right. You and can. I think you wouldn't do it you because could. it would it, it, it because <laughs> where, you can. Where could you do that? YouTube. Yeah. You could have the Will Sasso show on YouTube. Uh, you'd have too many racists being like, this yeah. is the greatest sketch in the world. I mean, right. It you'd would have be everyone taken, else going, are you out of your mind? Mostly white It'd people. It'd go viral. It would go viral. Be up there yeah. with uh, the beheadings. Yeah, at, yeah. Uh, you, you saw Dave Chappelle when he's a KK mem- KKK member, but he's black. Doesn't know he's, he's blind. black. The blind. And then when and then when he finds That's out he's so black, funny. he broke up with his wife. He was because she's an inner lover. Right. Amazing. Because uh, she's the. <laughs> Oh my god. That goodness. sounds like a genius sketch. Yeah, the stuff that shit's seen that? so no, it's, that's genius. It might be the best sketch I've ever seen. Th- that yeah. stuff is because he only he does he's the leader of the KKK, oh but he's blind he's a blind black yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no one knows he's black except for his wife. Right. Because he's always covered with a hood. <laughs> And so he's leading the charge, and his hood accent, he comes off, and everyone's like, oh. and, and it also, shows like KK members' heads bl- like blowing up because right. they can't believe it. But also, you know, okay, so it's risque for that reason. Also, he's doing like blind eyes in the sketch. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's got his eyes all crooked. It's like, blind, and, yeah, and, there's yeah, yeah. so many horrible things going on. But it's all so once. funny. But that's the thing. Man, at Mad fuck. TV, it was like, and I'm sure it was the same as Silent Live, and I, you know, I've heard some funny stories from there too, and you can, you know, you've, we've all read about them and stuff. But at Mad, it was like there was just, there was simply no line. Yeah. Also, it was like the 90s and into the 2000s. Which is a little the, different. The time. rules were so different. <laughs> and you could just bloop, 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 blah, 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 just talk about whatever you wanted. And we had this <clears throat> sort of, we had this, I mean, you know, we talk about it now. I can talk about it. I wouldn't want people to know about that horrible bit like years yeah. ago. I, I would be scared for people to know even then. But now I can tell you we'd be doing a dress rehearsal and Michael would be doing his famed uh, Stuart character, Mike McDonald. And he's got his bum with just his tidy whiteies on and it's dress rehearsal and he's got his bum near my face and I'm a fireman trying to get him not to fall down a well. <laughs> and during dress rehearsal, Mike just lets a fart go right up into my nose, like just it's farts hilarious. right in my face. Stuff like that, yeah. like there greatness. Was, we're yeah, we're literally pooling on each other, yeah. and but that you know, there, you're, there's you're a on safe, there for there's how a long, safe area where you can play and do yeah. anything you anything. want. Anything. I was there for five years. Did you ever think about making a transition to Saturday Night Live? Did, did that even go through? Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to. I mean, not I wanted to. The only person he's ever let do that, I think, is Taron. uh, Taron Killam, who just finished his run over there, and Jeff Richards was there for for years. Yeah, Jeff was there for like five years. I guess they didn't renew Taron's contract. Why? That's correct. He had one year left, and who knows what the the, uh, particulars are there, but Taron's got a lot of stuff he's moving on to. Yeah, he's directing Arnold Schwarzenegger's next movie. Oh, you're talking about Saturday Night Live? Yeah, Yeah, they didn't renew his or the guy who does all the impressions. Jay Farrell. Both of those guys are so... Incredible. I mean, I'm Taren, a fan. Taren was, I mean, I've known Taryn. Taryn, you and I both have. Yeah. Taryn was on 
S, S, on Matt TV, Matt TV when he was 19. He was Are you 19? kidding me? I met him on How yeah. I Met Your Mother. Really? Yeah. And we became great friends, but he, yeah. he's, he was always... What makes him always, so talented? He, I don't uh, he's know, He's just dude. one of the most naturally talented dudes. Well, really? like, first of all, he works his ass off. And he, now he matches that with working his ass off, and he's in his early 30s, yeah. so he's just an elder he's statesman He's also a total nerd. He's a, I said to him one time, I, he's a total nerd. Like, you go to his, he's got all these, like, you know, Star Wars dolls yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. He's got a whole... He's, he's always been in that. Not a sportsman or anything, just yeah. loves movies. Movies. He Comedy. would do this really funny Joker guy. thing. He's, he's, but I 19, said to him when was, before he went on, I said, "Dude, I go uh, not that it means anything, but I was just a lot older." And I said, "I hope you know how amazing you are. like. You're so." You good, said the right? exact thing about Daniel Tosh yesterday, brother. No, but this is different because I knew Taryn. I hung and Roy Scheider. Time. Yeah, and Roy Scheider. Roy Scheider. But I remember <laughs> saying to Taryn, "I go, I, I hope you're taking yourself as seriously as I am because right. you're you're that fucking good. Like yeah. you, you know. And we all knew it. Look, here's the thing about Taron Killerman. Yeah, he was on Saturday Night Live, uh, Mad TV. Rather, what are those shows? He was on A Living Color. Uh, my, he was on. <laughs> he was three, on for a year, and it was my last season. And I was like, I, I don't know that I've ever seen any more anyone who's more naturally talented. Wow. But at the same time, yeah. he matches it. Like it's all. Forget all of it. The guy's 19, so you can't even yeah. predict how great he's going to be. But I, I will say Always this. Always funny, like you know. uh, just amazing. And but I'll say this: I don't think they came close to scratching the surface on him. I, I, I Saturday Night Live. It he, well, he wasn't a main guy there. He, he really. I he didn't know was. that. Not, he, he was, but to but a the degree. Past couple not years, really. they didn't. That's really what I'm use saying. Him. For yeah. the past couple of years. He Generic was all, stuff or? like when they when they let him go. I was kind of like, and I, I I know nothing about the guy besides Saturday Night Live. I was kind of like, ah, makes sense. Like yeah. he really wasn't, he wasn't because, like a main guy. French, really. How about the French hipster sketch? That yeah, stuff he, was. He had, dude, yeah, he had some funny stuff. The, the stuff that I saw. So so he, I hadn't seen him in a you know about a month, and I go, what's going on? You know, he, let's go do something. And he said, dude, I've been working nonstop. I said, what are you doing? He goes, I'm going through the Groundlings program. Yeah. And we're going to put on a final show to see who gets in to the Groundlings. Okay. I went, we all went to see him in, after he'd been doing this for two months where they work on all these characters and these sketches. Yeah. I got to tell you, man, and I've seen a lot of sketch, obviously, yeah. and done enough of it. I think seeing him and that group who had been through that boot camp, I think the sketches I saw were some of the best things I've ever seen, wow. period. Wow. Like the, and I think that work ethic and that kind of, Boot camp got him, got him Saturday Night yeah, Live. That, sure. That's kind of what, what... What they say on Saturday Night Live is, well, when people are going through it, they hate every moment. And then when they're done, they're like, that's the best thing I've ever done. It's yeah. helped. Look what it creates. In yeah. my career. No, you just... It's like, I look back at my experience at MAD, and it's it's sort of like, you let me what? On national TV? Mm -hmm. Whenever I... I do what? I do... And then you're in this, you know, this comedy environment, like I was saying, where you're allowed to just bloop, 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 whatever the heck comes to your mind, and it's it's encouraged to the degree that that people are getting in fights and stuff is going yeah. crazy, and everyone, in a way, it's sort of, you know, I will say, oh well, okay, well, someone called, you know, they called Nicole the c word. You got to sit down, and talk about it, maybe. In another way. It's it's interesting. The sort of prisoners run the asylum approach to comedy usually gets really great results. Well, look at Mary Shear. You have to have, some, Shear, sort of, yeah. you have to have some sort of structure, though, right? Right. Because if you just have, let the the comedians run amok to me, well, as long as no, sure. as long as the as long as the impetus is getting the funniest sketch. So Mary right. Shear, yeah. she was uh, prodigiously talented yeah. and so experienced. And yeah. when I got there, you were talking like she was already an all star pro. That's right. But Mary and Mary was difficult. Mary would look at like sketches that the writers were up all night writing, and she would draw lines through the entire pages. Whoa. And I would get so mad at her. But. Her anger was always about making it funnier. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. so as impossible as she was, let me tell you, yeah. come showtime, yeah. she was on another level. Off. Well, Woo! Judd Apatow talks about that in his book where on Freaks and Geeks, he said the reason why it was such a, a hit for, not the time, it's a hit now, right? It's kind of a cult classic. But yeah. before, it wasn't a hit when I was on air, but the reason why it worked because he said in the writer's room, it was really about what was the best storyline and people took their egos out of it They're like what literally man sure. whatever works put it in there like yeah. we have no egos in there well that's that's the way to do comedy i feel like at mad we were sometimes successful with that when you're competitive and you're trying to get your spot i mean first of all you're coming up with an idea 
you're either writing it or you're taking it to a writer going, hey, let's work on this thing. Past that, you're trying to get it into the, to the pack for the table read. Yeah. In the table read, there could be 20, 30 sketches. They're going to pick seven or eight of them Damn. to do. Then they're going to do notes, and maybe one or two of them will get dropped. And then you get to the, to the air, and then it's like, yeah, okay, it's going to – this one we're going to put on at you know, 10 to 12. It's not going to get – or you, you do it live, and you get that spot on live night that for your, your big new thing that you love – is on as the the audience is gassed and yep. half of them have left and yep. they're like uh. so there's so many different reasons to be super competitive and super into it uh, to where it, it, it yeah, it's just it's it's an interesting it's I understand why why people wouldn't get along but at the same time we did a pretty good job of of having a good time I think you know I'm uh, sure they're saying on Saturday, Saturday Night Live how. <laughs> Some of the the cast members were more famous than the guests that would host. So it becomes oh, sure. a problem. Like when you have Mike Myers, right. Chris Rock, yeah. Adam Sandler, uh, you know Phil Hartman, yeah. and they're more famous than the, the these stars hosting yeah. the show. How and, about and they're pitching and they're pitching their fucking yeah. bits and yeah. they don't get picked up. That's I mean you're talking about guys can't walk down the street. Yeah, right. and you're saying ah this bit's not going to work. Yeah. yeah, that's when you're running into ego. How about Eddie Murphy hosted the show while he was in the cast because yeah. someone dropped out once. Yeah. that's how popular he was. Yeah. He was in the cast and he hosted oh, the as, show as, as big as it gets, man. They, they said they said they were going, they said done. they were going through a. What would you say? Chris Lea should have done SNL. Yeah. Chris, Chris would be. I think Chris would be amazing on, on a show like that. Yeah, don't well, you think? so? Yeah, he could have done that character, the stork, and then he could have done <laughs> yep. that character, yep. the sea bird. Yep, the sea bird. And then, like oh, bird characters. Yeah, a lot of all bird birds. Humor. The shoe He's bill. Just in the, bird bits. Yeah. The shoe bill. The, the clam, pelican. The clam eating shoe bill. <laughs> right. The, yeah. The domestic. The dumbest shit. Domestic but skinny chicken. Yeah. The blue feathered whistler. Yep. 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 The uh, cassowary. Yep. Any bird he could yep. play. Dude, the, I nail beaked. Uh, <laughs> Feather Bell. Yep, yep. I saw Chris. Chris was on uh, the Rich Eisen show, which is one of the biggest sports shows in the world. And yeah. he tweeted out that he's on there. I texted him. I said, "Who in their fucking right mind booked you on the Rich Eisen sports show? Yeah, you don't know shit about sports." Right, and he right, goes, right. "I know. That's the best part. I'm going on to make fun of people who watch sports. Oh, I love that. I'm like what the fuck? I, I, and he, I watched that. it and he killed it. Yeah, he killed of it. That, he did. Killed that would have been so. It's but so also funny. What a breath of fresh air. He's on the Rich Eisen. Rich I, just surrounded by helmets. He has no idea also, what the logos. Nothing. Are. No nothing. Idea. Bobbleheads. Like nothing. who the fuck is nothing. that? That that. I said, "You're yeah. an agent, man. What the fuck are you doing?" He goes, "No, it's gonna be great. I'm gonna make fun of everyone." Who watches sports and he literally destroyed it. I I'm think sure Rich Eisen loved it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> of course. Great. Yeah. He's a oh, He's 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 a fucking. He should play a dodo bird. He would be pretty good as a bird. Any sort of bird or um or a sugar brain. A sugar brained. Maybe a sugar brain boy. Or a popsicle sucking imbecile. Yeah, that would be a, a good pop- character. The popsicle it, sucking imbecile. It's, it's so funny. <laughs> when we were at lunch that one time with Chris, I went, "Bro, you're telling me you're not on any drugs?" He goes, "I don't drink or do drugs." He's never he smoked goes, a cigarette. He goes, "I've never, never had even a sip touched of alcohol. Him. I've never, I've never had a He's sip of alcohol." Never eaten a vegetable. Nothing. I went. <laughs> Never touched a weight. I said, bro. Never heard of on it. <laughs> loves clam chowder. Yeah, loves it. Yeah, yeah. It, I. it's fascinating to me. He's never, like, he's I'm like, so you're so telling weird. me you're not on drugs? And he goes, no. Yeah. I was it's sitting, just life. I, 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 went, I was amazing. sitting with his family and his dad, and, and he goes, Chris is just sitting there, he goes, oh, oh, I got to get up. Yeah. And he just gets up and he walks away. I go, ah, yeah. he's restless. And his yeah. father goes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're not getting him to sit anywhere. Yeah. You're not getting him to sit and read a book. He's no. not going to do any of that No, stuff. he walks around constantly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just saw him recently, and he was just pacing around at his own thing. I went to the premiere of uh, a screening of uh, the film that he did. Ah, I was supposed to go to that. Yeah, I couldn't find a babysitter. I was with Neil Brennan. Me. What's that? I wish you would have texted me. You're going. Oh, I yeah. I, I thought I would have. Uh, I thought Fuck. I would have seen you there. He Fuck. told me you were coming. I was. Uh, me and Neil Brennan. I watched him do stand up like way before he got to known. And he was in. Uh, he was at the Laugh Factory. He's just killing the room. He's just doing characters. And Neil's just going. I mean, he's, Neil's going. He's just. He's all of it. He's yeah, all yeah. of it. What do I mean? He's a star. Yeah. It's just so obvious. And I go. I know, I know. I, he's amazing. I'm trying to get him to read more so he can, like, you know, get. And, and Neil goes, read more. He's an innocent. Don't read. Don't fuck with that. You don't need to read. And, and, and he needs to just keep doing that. That's good what Neil. Yeah, you good know, for don't Neil. Add, don't <laughs> add your Neil. fucking potion. Oh, I'm gonna make you more famous by yeah. reading books. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and he was so right. He's I was so like, right. What I say? Chris he's is destroying the room. Yeah. What the fuck? He lives. And his brother. His brother will tell you. His brother goes. 
The dude is this fucking idiot lives for, he's always lived for one thing and only one thing and that is to make people laugh. Sure. Everything else, go fuck yourself. Oh, by the way, he wouldn't even read his own brother's script. One time we were hanging out for coffee. Of course not. I'm like, Matt, what have you been up to? He's like, oh yeah, I just wrote this thing. Oh, what do you think? Well, I, you know, I'd like Chris to read it. Chris sitting right there. Yeah. I go, did you read it? He goes, yeah, I'll get around to it. Thumbing away on his phone. Yep. It's his fucking brother. Strangely, they have to spend Christmas together. Strangely I think disciplined, they're, they're right? Like, he'll uh, show up on time. Yes. Strangely oh, disciplined. Yeah. Like, he will get his work done. Like, if he has to do something, he'll be there every single fucking day on yeah. time, and he'll just do that. But I think what we should do with Chris is him. hold Kill him, him down him. and fill a um, fill a garbage bag full of marijuana vapor and just push it into his nose and mouth. <laughs> great, I agree. And just sit force on it. I'll vape. sit on it. You guys, yeah, you guys hold him down and yep. hold the, the bag. The old force vape. Of, <laughs> of marijuana smoke or vapor. Yep. To both, actually. Smoke and vapor. Now it's time to play the game force vape. <laughs> force vape. Can and you imagine Chris high? Yep. <laughs> the fuck? And I'll take a cocaine suppository and shove it right up his ass. No, we can't because he'll pace. He'll do nothing. But yeah, we do that sweat. first. All right. We, we, we put a cocaine suppository right up his ass. And then bring him down yeah. with uh -huh. the weed. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. And then bring him down with That's the weed. Good. Show him how he needs to calm down. Yes. That's we give him idea. chamomile weed tea. Weed would calm Fuck him that, down. Force man. him to eat a hash brownie full of oil. Oh, That'll get him <laughs> so high. I mean, highest. <laughs> Force him. That would be the funniest thing ever. And now it's time to force feed you, you me, a fucking Brennan, pop round. The three of us, like in like uh, Breaking Bad hazmat suits, <laughs> like not wanting to touch it, like forcing the most THC into one brownie. Just yep. us with like droppers and there's beakers and bubbles and <laughs> shit. Lab. And we're like, here we are. And yep. Just to fuck the Leo over. <laughs> How mad would he be? Yeah, oh. Jesse Pinkman just literally metamorphosed. But he would, you know, he's so he'd be like just, this. You guys, seriously. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Seriously. Guys, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Oh, Let's man. Let's get into some current events with Evan the Body, the Cubs. Hey, so the far, you shit the rug here, huh, buddy? What happened? You suck. What do you mean? I didn't do well? No. What are you talking about? Why not? This Why is, didn't this I do is well? the will we know. This is the, the man is back. Yeah. yeah. The man is you back. Know, yeah. We're yeah. Last time he was sick. Last time I was sick. Last time I had, you had Zika. Yeah, I did have Zika. I got over it. But we're having a good time here on the 10 minute. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, it no, is, is it the fighter and the kid? What is it? The fighter and the kid? The man, the fighter and the kid? Yeah. Is it the man, the fighter and the kid? Hey, what's going on with 10 minute, by the way? Did you stop doing it? I'm glad you asked. Just let it, yeah. Lonely ladies, that's why you're listening to 10 Minute Podcast. Hey, all right, welcome to the 10 Minute Podcast. Uh, it's a special, special show here. I'm being joined by a couple of friends who decided to drop by the Onnit Studios here in their own Playa Vista. We're in Playa Vista, right? Yeah. It's uh, Brendan Shaw, Brendan Big Brown Shaw. But yep. what was what was your... Come on, man. Welcome be, to the 10 Minute Podcast. You know, you're going to want to subscribe on iTunes, subscribe to the show uh, or your podcast app, whatever you got there. My name is Will, the chief engineer of Laughter and Cheer Sasso. Today, wow. sitting in for Chad no god Culchin and Tommy no joke Blacha I have Brian the Kid Callen Brian the Kid Callen yeah. of course yeah. Brian the Kid yeah. Callen that's yeah. Brandon Big Brown Shop yeah, Brandon, Brandon Shop yeah. they're here right yeah, yeah. man yeah. You know, thanks hey, for look, having us man look, I really appreciate thanks it so I'm much. sorry to jack your, your, your podcast no listen because no, last here. time we were on yeah. I broke your arm well you, you haven't had me you, you haven't had me back yeah no because but but let's yeah. let's call a spade a spade you <clears throat> tried to make me flay you and I didn't want to so oh. Brendan Shaw broke my arm I didn't know any of this yes and right before we got on the air Brendan asked me what's been going on with the 10-minute podcast, and since my arm healed, we have been uh, moving on with the show. <laughs> but but uh, gobble, gobble, gobbling like with a broken wing for what you, do you mean? seems natural. What do you mean, gobble, gobble? gobble. gobble. No, 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 I need my arm. But I know, but, but having your arm twist behind your back and have while well, you fucking yeah. gobble. I don't his, gobble, his, gobble, his, gobble. His, gobble, his power, his power source. Dick yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well you, I did well, scarf well, that you cock drink right down, but I was more because you told me to, not because my arm was broken. drain his root while you drain his root. Well, I don't know. It wasn't necessarily. It's fucking rolling corral. I don't know there was a full Rude road night. But yeah, all right. My, yeah. yeah, he bristled. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. Oh, God, all right. Yeah, my mustache and chin were definitely a little ruddy and red from the experience, but sure. I'm not going to say that's the only reason I'm falling. Yeah, it's not the only <laughs> You know, it's great to have Brian the Kid Callen Thanks, back buddy. here on the 10 Minute Podcast. Of course, listeners of the Fighter and the Kid Podcast know that every time I come by, sometimes I like to just jack the show. Yeah, the you, well, yeah no, I understand. Yeah, Takeover. Yeah. Well, the it's fighter. only 10 minutes long. You know, you can just skip forward. As a matter of fact, I invite listeners of the Fighter and the Kid Podcast 
podcast, your loyal listenership. If they're not enjoying this part, skip ahead. <laughs> I'm just joking. One more reminder to subscribe to him in the podcast. Really okay. shop on Amazon. And you're boring me already. Yeah, I'm really boring you. And uh, I'll tell you what, I got a big jug of water here. It's pissed Brian off. It's pissed yeah, Brandon off. You're pissing they, me off right now the way you're yeah, talking. Yeah, I told him I'd fill it with clam chowder. Hey, you know what? Yeah, that's a callback joke. Not if you're only listening to 10 Minute Podcast. <laughs> it's all new for you these guys. Hey, new humor for people listening to 10 Minute Podcast. We like to call it a callback in the world of comedy. If you want to hear where that came from, you want to check out the Fighter and the Kid Podcast. You want to go to iTunes. You want to subscribe Man, to that show. Also, you. we talked about ISIS, Norman Schwarzkopf, Narcos, Saddam Stranger Hussein. Things, Saddam yep. Hussein yep. being hung, yep. viral videos, <laughs> beheadings, all sorts of flavor on the Fighter and the Kid. What have you guys been up to? Well, I'm glad you asked. I've been well, what's new with you guys? Yeah. Like we just Tennis, said. boxing, lifting, real estate. Things are going pretty damn well for me, buddy. You know, I, I got to I gotta tell Making you, Brian. a lot of money, too. I'm listen, a, my, maybe I'll buy a second Tesla. I <laughs> 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 uh, love Tesla electric, jokes. Right? They sure are. Yeah. They sure are. Uh, listeners of the 10-Minute Podcast sure miss you. Uh, is there Thanks. any message you'd like to... I, anytime I, of course, talk about you and Chris, I say, uh, you know, Chris is yeah. busy, and then Brian is, you know, he's uh, Well, I guess I'm sorry that um, when I left Not the ratings... Plunged. Well, mm, yeah. that's not no, that's not Dipped. fair to say. No, Dipped. they've actually forked. Has it no. gotten better? Uh, no. I won't say. Okay, I won't say it's gotten better, Brandon. No, but we've definitely maintained because we preach our listeners so much and preach, preach, preach. Uh, but yeah, after after you left, the the smell in the room returned to just the the gas from my asshole, and uh, hey. just to keep wow. it up. Yeah, I actually farted into the mic for you. Because yeah. you weren't there. Well, I remember one time when I had our new house. It was our new house where my family was was mm-hmm. and my 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 wife, my my newborn, my yep. newborn, yep. and uh, and I had my my sweet little daughter who was maybe three. And you uh, you came over for uh, a little bit. You you ate all the cheese in my fridge. <laughs> I remember and, that. Uh, and I was then, eating it out of a bag. Yep, right? you ate all the cheese, <laughs> and then you uh, and then you said, "Well, I'll see you guys later." Now. In my house, and Brendan, you don't remember this because I don't think you ever went there. I had a downstairs bathroom with a glass door, just a glass door. Uh, so there wasn't a lot of, you know, it was a glass door. Hey, come and on. we were seeing him to the door, and he said, I'm going to make a left turn here. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Give me a second. He made a left turn. He closed that glass door, and he shat into that bowl, and it made such a loud noise. And my wife went, <laughs> I just ate my wife went, oh, my God. And I go, I go, oh, yeah. She goes, but it's our new house. I go, yeah. well, he's taking he the shit. Care. He shot in our new house. And he got up and he goes, see you later. <laughs> and with his big meat paws, grabbed my wife, gave her a big old smooch on the hand. You know, even might have, he washed his hands or he didn't. I don't know. But the I bottom line is there was, some, there was some poo-poo germs on his hands. Yeah. Grabbed her by the by the couple cheeks. Gave her a big grabbed old kiss. Grabbed her by the face. Uh-huh. Yeah. With gave her a big hands. old inappropriate kiss. She, was, she felt traumatized. And then smacked me on the ass and left. How about the time that me and our good pal Marshall Cook went over there while you were out of town yeah. and Marshall took his shirt off and we took a bunch of pictures with him holding <laughs> bottles of wine with yeah. Amanda. He took a picture of me. He had, he said he had both my children in his hands with a dead face. Will did? Yep. And it was a picture and it said, I'm at your home. Your family is lovely. I was like, no! All these across the country, just dead eyes with Stella and Finn in my arms. And Marshall has a good body. He's young, yeah. and he he yeah. took all these pictures of his shirt off with my wife in his arms. Yeah. Not not appropriate. So do, do what what can I ask you this? Yeah. What do you miss about like? I mean, I don't like. Do you miss ever doing? Okay, hold on. Do you like ever miss like? What? Hold on. Do you wait? Let me get. Hold on. Go ahead. Man. Take you, it easy. No, I know. But take do you ever? Do you ever? Take it I easy. think listeners want to know. Do you ever miss this show? Look, man. Do you ever just miss doing this show? Look, look, miss Will. What do you want to say to them? Look, do you miss I'm, Will? I'm, hey, want, hey, listen. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know I'm super busy, right? Yeah, I know you're busy. That's no, why but, but it's great. It. Because with training. Oh, uh, don't say with, that. With the podcast. Don't say, no, just say you're busy with work. You have so much going on yeah, with work. Real estate. You don't have to go through Don't say real estate. Stand-up. I think the listeners would like to know Goldbergs, how busy you are. You know, you'll come back whenever you yeah. come on through. You know, So what happens is when you're that busy, there's not a lot of space in your brain. When you're making money, you're having to manage that money, you're having to give that money Would you say you have to cut? Cut the fat, right? You got to cut the fat, buddy. You got to cut the fat? Cut and the, the 10 fat. minute podcast is the fat? No, I'm not saying I, I didn't I have, say that. I, well, hold on a second. Said. No, no, no. No, I'm picking up a heavy vibe here no. that you think that no, no, this I, isn't the fat on the no, no. ribeye. By the way, no. the part I eat first. Yeah, that's the me part too. I eat first. Me yeah. too. That's the tasty no, part. No, I'm not talking about a nice, fine ribeye. 
I'm talking about the fat. Oh, you're talking and, about the and fat. I know that. You gotta get rid of the fat. And you're I, talking about the fat. You're talking about the extra baggage. Yeah, you know? yeah. You're talking about the fat that would accumulate if you did nothing yeah. but drink clam chowder as you're going for a walk through the neighborhood at 85 yeah. degrees yeah. and you pass out. Hey, if you want to hear a little bit more about that, you want to check out the fighter and the kid. Yeah, podcast. you want to check out the fighter see and the kid. Uh, see what that I'm just saying, I looked at my life and, I, and there were a couple things that I had to. <laughs> you know, away. That's all. Without a, yeah, you like yeah, cutting the made fat. A, yeah, you made a cleave sound. Yeah. You made a, like a, a cleaver. Sometimes motion. you got to take it up and you got to go. Well, now I got yeah. all this stuff going on. Yeah. I'm making crazy money. Everybody yeah, loves yeah. Oh, me. Geez. Now I don't want to put don't... words in your mouth, but what Brian said to me, he goes, "It feels like I'm trying to fly and have all this extra baggage." Oh Jesus! Yes. I Who said that? And I, I went, no, I went. Well, no. what's the baggage? No, and no, then no, you no. asked him, and then what did he say? And then he goes. Look. Ten minute pie. Oh, I went, no, said it. And, yeah, and I, and I oh, told him. I said oh. I love Will. Yeah, and Chris. I do too. And I do yeah. too. It's just that. It's just that when now Chris when, just forgot where I lived. Yeah. I tried talking to Chris, and he just goes, "I'm not having it." Yeah, we're not having what no, you listen, and his wife. Whatever. The whole the thing when is I, moving when forward. I want to soar. When I when I sprout my eagle wings yeah, and yeah. I want to soar. Yeah, and you, you, there's a limit, right? Yeah. So whenever you get yeah. on a plane, they go, "What's your what's your load?" Yeah, let's, yeah. What's your load? You got to weigh bags. your bag. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes if there's if there's an extra bag, yeah, and we got to get from yeah. point to point, yeah, I'm following you. Yeah, then, then you gotta. Uh, <laughs> Oh, That's man, all don't do. say yeah. that about the yeah. show. It's cutting the fat. No, yeah. it's, it's, a the fat. it's a fun podcast. I know, but it's I, only but 10 I minutes look, long. I, I enjoy it. Look at my life. Thank you. I appreciate I it, Brendan. No sugar You've always life. been a friend of the show, right. Brendan. This is unbelievable. Right. Unbelievable, no, Brian. No, no sugar Loyal. in my life. No yeah. sugar in my Band life. Band of brothers, yeah. watch it. No no leftists. No leftists in my life. Oh, no leftists. See, I knew you were voting for Trump. No, no, no. Everyone within the sound of my voice, we're going to close out this episode with Brian's word for Donald Trump. You know, I appreciate that everyone's continued to listen to 10 Minute Podcast. We're going to move on with the fighter and the kid here. It's always a joy to come by. And I want loyal listeners of 10 Minute Podcast who appreciate the show to know that the reason that Brian hasn't been by is because Brian is going to vote for Donald Trump. No, I'm not. And and, and because Chris d- won't vote at no, all. That's not at all. He has no that's idea. What he has no true. idea. And I'm so I'm very political <laughs> and I'm running as a third party nominee and I'd like to make my announcement now. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> Please vote for me in 2016 with my running mate Chad Colson <laughs> and Tommy Watson. No. Oh, unbelievable. That's Brian cutting the fat. That was 10 minutes. We actually did minutes. a thing. Oh, well, thanks for letting me. What you got, Evan the Sorry. Beard the Cub? That's hilarious. <laughs> did a full 10 minutes there, didn't we? Yeah. I'm going to jack really that. Exactly 10 minutes. Show. We do really have 10 minutes. Thank you, guys. Did. That was fun. The in the yeah. Game. Get ready for your ratings to fucking. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'll report back and I'll be like, I'll look what happened. Yeah. See? Because they yeah, fucking. All right. First one we got today is Apple unveiled the uh, iPhone 7 and 7S. Well, the. Tr- Sort of. They tried to. Uh, their CEO is in the middle of like the big presentation meeting or whatever in San Francisco before they're supposed to actually come out with everything. And they got basically cock-blocked by their own Twitter account, which accidentally leaked everything way too early. Ooh. So they ruined their own CEO's presentation. Not a, t- not a great move. They're all, we already got it, man. Yeah. yeah, but so we're getting, it's waterproof. And most importantly, they're taking out the, uh, the, speak, the, the jack. The headphone jack. Why? What? So you it's oh because Bluetooth. Because the headphones are Bluetooth that come with it, yes, right? Because they come. Oh. Have you wireless, seen them? Wireless no, headset. Haven't. We're all gonna lose them. I, you guys are like, we're all gonna lose them. They're oh, tiny, just the earbuds, the, and they're all Bluetooth. Waterproof is fucking dope. But you know what the issue for me is? I have a six plus, the the newer one besides the seven. Whenever, in tell me if you guys have the same issue. Whenever they release a new phone. My phone starts to act up. They want yes. me to download s- some new software, yeah. but my phone starts. That's being, so getting interesting. Crazy. That happens to me too. It's I was wondering how fucking weird is that? Isn't yeah. it weird? It happens every to me time, also, like yeah. clockwork. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna get the f- it's the sevens out today for sure. Getting it just because it's waterproof. That's brilliant. Waterproof. Yeah. So when's it come out? Why you gotta fucking pre-sale it? They just unveiled it today. They just showed ah, pictures man. and gave out the details of Damn, what it's gonna waterproof. be like. Waterproof is sick. Can I the, trade my phone Bluetooth. in for a new one? Or how it does depends that on your plan. You got a jump plan with T-Mobile? I don't know. What, what service you got? AT&T. I don't know if it's for Brian, you, Brian, it's not an Oldsmobile. Just buy a new one, okay? You don't <laughs> yeah. have to worry about your trade-in. What do I get on a trade-in on all right, this? Man, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, they're right. expensive, bro. Right, yeah, the yeah, really expensive right. You're just talking about buying another yeah, Tesla. Brian, right? Brian, you don't have $700 laying you around. You guys are being yeah. mean. Whatever. Take me for a $700 lunch. <laughs> no. Now. <laughs> right now. Yeah, I want it. I want a $700 lunch. What do you have, lunch. Will? You have the no. six I have the six. Is this the six? That's the six. Yeah, I have the six. Cal and I have the six plus. I'll yeah. get the new one usually. That Bluetooth speaker is bullshit, though. That's the terrible. Bluetooth headphones? Have I you seen their the most uncomfortable We're headphones? We're all going to lose. Well, Bose, has, lose they, Bose my... has the cordless. So. Really? Yeah. Not the same. No. 
But they have the, they have the cordless ones. No, Isn't that tons of people have cordless. Oh, good ones. luck using the Bose ones. Guarantee you, they set it up so you can only use the iPhone. Well, yeah, that, that's also, why Apple does it. They make it so you can only use oh Apple software. Usually. And and Bose is a, probably a German company, and those people are meticulous. They're not losing anything. We're in America, where True. I want to lose shit, True. and I want stuff to be inexpensive. You will, but lose not those. my lunch. Buy me a seven hundred dollar lunch. Buy me, and a I'll tell you this: it's the least we can do. The, it's the least. I'll tell you all what. All the clam chowder you can handle. I, all the cl- yeah, you got like a clam chowder place over by the beach. No, I'm Hot not clam even. Chowder. Oh, we'll take, chowder. We'll take you to fucking Gladstones. How about nope. that? Yeah, Gladstones. No. Yeah, all the oyster crackers. Maybe Mel Gibson will be there and he'll get drunk. Yeah. Again. Well, I'll tell you what. You know the coiled up the the ear things yeah. that we use yeah. now. I lose those all the time. Me so too. every time I'm in an airport, I buy another one, and I don't buy the cheap one. I buy like the top of the line skull candy. Because you're rich. Well, because I'll buy seven hundred dollar lunch for myself and all right. just leave. I night. spent 170 bucks on headphones. Really? Yeah, I well, thought that was I was, was kind of joking. I, that, I, that's I, stupid, though, Brian. I, know, and <laughs> I was good. joking. That's completely stupid. I agree with that. I went to that. Someone, someone gave me the wireless uh, Beats yeah. ones, and I lost them. And they're they're kind of they're this big. They just go around your ear for yeah. working out. Lost them. I lose oh, sunglasses like lost that. Them. It drives me crazy. If you're going to create Bluetooth uh, ear earbuds, and we all have to lose the other thing, great. Also create a magnet that is programmed to keep those earbuds close to the phone. Correct. I want to be able to bring my phone up and go, and the phone goes, and like the bad guy in get in uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm talking about like Iron Man. Yeah, it just wink and yeah, that'd be that's sick. what's up. Or how about give me an option where there is a cord. So if I want a Bluetooth, great, but I can use the cord so I don't lose them as easily. Yeah, give that's me some problem. fucking options. How about a cord that doesn't? You don't have to unravel. That doesn't get all. Crazy. You know the CEO of uh, Apple suck your dick. <laughs> what do you mean? Speaking of dicks, you know what else would be good? Uh, blue, uh, a cord that just goes up your True. pee hole. No. Nope. So that you just no, zip. That, you nope. just pull it out. No. Nope. See, I'm into that. Right. Nope. In the nope. morning, nope. you get your morning wood, nope. and you have just two earbuds nope. sticking out of your no, urethra, no, no, no. like the picture I sent nope. you. And then you just go, and Why? you just like starting a lawnmower. Why? Why would you do that? And then you That's just it, shoot blood out of your nope. dick. No. Nope. Blood and semen. No, please. I'm following this. Yeah. So that way you have a real terrifying orgasm, just a painful orgasm. No, no. And then and you have your Bluetooth. You never lose them. And they're waterproof, so all the Sir, and come. please, yes, sir. I'm going to have to ask you. Hold on a second. Change the conversation. Sir, hold on. Just run no, just, sir, it's my show. I can't right, run with just, me. Nope. here to use the restroom for a moment. No. Nope. I want to let your listeners know about my favorite way to come. Okay. Good. What else you got, Ed? Next. All right, next one we got is Luke Rockhold said that he might consider taking a break from fighting to start modeling if the money in his most recently offered UFC contract doesn't get significantly bumped up. He said, quote, the, uh, the money is bullshit about his recent do, contract Do, do we know his pay? We know what he got for his last fight. What his was it? His last fight. Let me guess. Um, let me guess. Let me guess. Rockhold made. Go for it. 80 and 80. 80 and 80 for a champ? Yeah. What did he get? No. Uh, he made 250K plus 40,000 in Reebok money. Uh, plus perhaps, I don't, I don't know why they put this in there if they couldn't verify Bonus. it. Bonus? Uh, possibly a dollar for each of the estimated 380,000 UFC 99 pay per view buys. Pretty good. Not bad. Over 200K. Who, Seems like a lot of money. He's going to make. Be more money so modeling. Made, what's your thought on he that? made over 200k. This is the problem. So, well, I mean, 300, 300, right? I mean, 250 plus the 40 in Reebok, so we're at 290. And then if that pay per view points thing is true, which we don't know it is, talking about then that would add over like another 150k. Okay, so say what do you want to say? 600k total. Let's just be friendly here. Yeah, 600k so, yeah, let's bonuses. Be a little liberal with it. 600. 600k to compete in a life changing event where the UFC made how much money off of him? Uh, again, we go, oh, 600K, that's pretty good. Not really, not for an upper echelon guy, not for a world champion. It's can really I, can not Can I ask that you great. a question, though? That's pre-tax. And manager and agents. People don't understand how and, much fight camp And training cost. camp, and everything. Oh, he has to pay for that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, then oh, yeah. he should definitely do some more. Oh, and then remember, how much you get from Reebok? 40K? And 40. I think Tom Ford, whoever he's modeling with, is paying him hundreds of thousands of dollars. So. Um, here's a... A tough economics question. If Luke Rockhold is not on that card, how much does attendance drop? What what card was it? Uh, it was the Bisping one? Yeah, that yeah. was that was Bisping Rockhold at one ninety nine. Do we know how many uh, sales are on that? Luke's not a draw. Three hundred eighty thousand pay per view buys. That's so this good. is I just but you know you and I both live this reality all the time, right? Well, well as, 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 as a businessman, yeah, as, a, as right? a businessman, the UFC is going to go. Well, excuse me, sir, and I love Luke. 
Had tar- nothing to do tar- with Luke. Nothing. It was just business. Just business. If you're Dana White, you're going to go, cool, don't fight. You're yeah. really not a big draw for us. Well, see, so for me, when I go to a club, if I ask for a large guarantee and I go, I want, you know, whatever it is, they go, cool, but let's look at your past performances Correct. and let's look at how many butts you actually get in the seat. Correct. How many people are buying tickets to see Correct. you when you're competing with all the it's, other things? But it's no different. It's just economics. In, in anything in entertainment, anything. If you go to a movie, if you go, if you're head of stu- if you're the head of a studio, an actor comes in, pick any actor. Sure. And you go, hey man, Roy Scheider. Right. Roy Schneider. We do this shit all the Roy time. Schneider. And Roy Schneider goes, hey, man, I need $10 million to make this movie. And you're like, well, let's just look at your previous buys. Yeah. You've only sold, sold 300000 yeah. You're just nowhere near the money. No. So it's tough because- You don't even get financing for a movie unless you can get certain actors. Correct. My friend's so so f- with Luke, it's tough because, <clears throat> A, he lost his last fight to Michael Bisping. B, he's not a draw. So his leverage here is not great. You yeah. know what I'm saying? For, to to make to make the UFC budge, you really got to have some pull like it's a tough. Connor, yeah. Brock, Ronda, or something like that. But for Luke, good looking guy, for whatever reason, maybe it's his cockiness, maybe it's the way he looks, maybe it's because he has everything going for him. People aren't drawn to him. Same way with DC, they're just not pay per view draws amazing, unless man. John Jones is fighting DC. For Luke, he doesn't really have. Even with Weidman, Weidman has the same problems where he's just not a draw. Mm-hmm. So for Luke to say "fuck you," pay me more money. I hate and I hate as as a fighter I hate this shit but the UFC's going don't fight mm. we're fine we're good man wow yeah we wouldn't have, we wouldn't even notice they have future uh superstars like 38 year old CM Punk yeah. correct which we fights will, this weekend which we will get to we should all watch the this fan this questions I'm going out of town uh, because I'm always shooting movies god damn it I'm going to Boston to shoot another movie film don't piss me what off else what else you got uh, it's it's it, it's tough because then from what I hear from my sources, they're doing Chris Weidman versus Yoel Romero in Madison Square Garden. Oh, my God. I'm excited about so that. So you got Yoel, Chris, and then Cowboy Robbie Lawler on that card. Chris Yoel isn't a draw. You you make that a pay-per-view, you might get 200000 I don't know, man. Yeah. Depends how the other card looks like. Yeah. But, uh, again, Chris isn't a headliner. Luke's not a headliner. If any of those guys take a stance like this, you really you have, you have to be uh, Conor McGregor to. Very get few people, done. very very few people translate to big dollars in viewership. Conor, Ronda, uh, is John Jones? Not really. Not Historically, really. not Isn't that really. amazing. Not really. It's amazing. You, you, uh, Anderson Silva didn't forever either. Yeah, brother. Yeah. You gotta have. You gotta put asses in seats, uh, dude. What do you? Let me tell you something, brother. Hey. When it's all about putting asses in seats, Hogan brother, knows. Yeah, dude. You know, Paul Orndorff never had box office. King Kong Bundy never had box King office. Kong, well, let me tell you something. When the Hulkster filled that arena, brother, they were all there. They're, they're saying their prayers. They're training. They're eating their vitamins, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's brother. good to see you, man. Where'd you come from? You just showed up. UFC, if anyone brother. knows marketing, it's Hulk Hogan, well, Let me tell you man. something, yeah. brother. That sex yeah. tape you made, I you know, watched. Let me tell you something, dude. In the WWE or the WWF, like they used to call it when I was there, and I slammed that big, dirty Andre the Giant right through the mat at WrestleMania three, dude. You want to put an ass every 18 inches brother and if what is his name luke what? rockhold rock 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 yeah. rock yeah. well let me tell you something dude. Rock, yeah. yeah rock bloodle he's i'll tell you something dude <laughs> yeah. if he's got those good looks dude he's like rick rude strutting his stuff and he might think he's a good looking guy and he's got he's got ford models dude he's got wilhelmina models over here brother but as soon as i drop that big leg on him and i snap those skinny arms and legs <laughs> Not he a, won't yeah, be I, able to tell no, all no, those no. sweat hey, hogs hey, on the front row Hulk, Hulk, to keep it down Luke, Luke, while he shows Hulk, the ladies. Hulk, Hulk, hold on. Yeah, brother. Hulk, yeah, Hulk. dude. Luke is a real fighter. Yeah. All right, dude. And he would, yeah, but he so is Rick Rude, brother. No, you and guys so are not. CM Punk, no, brother. you guys are not. I'll tell real you something. Fighters. My brother from another mother, dude. CM Punk, dude. He's in UFC 203, brother. Yeah, he is. And he's and gonna come. He's gonna lay the smack down, brother. Well, because he's yeah, it's general. Brother. It's pretty general. Well, he's gonna go in there, bro. Yeah, bro. Is that, is that your assessment? He's gonna. UFC. What do you think he's gonna do in the fight? You know, CM. What do you think he's gonna do? Hall? Well, let me tell you something, brother. I didn't get a whole lot of chance to work with CM. Now, when I say work, brother. There's work and then there's shoot, dude. Work means, you know, we like to keep it kayfabe, dude. But here we'll tell you, you know, wrestling is a, it's a work, dude. What, what? Well, it's not, you know. What? Well, you know. <laughs> no, I don't. It's not, well, you know, it's not real. Well, I mean, I don't want to well, say. Well, you said, no, no, we no, know that. Well, no, yeah. It's not real, it's but work, you're, brother. you're prepared to say it's not real. Well, hold on, dude. It's work, but it's right, not real. It's, it's not real. It's not real. work. 
No, look. You didn't say you didn't say you didn't pronounce the is L. Real, dude. You didn't you said when I body slam Kamala, that's real, that's brother. Real. You see him go down. I'm, okay, but maybe the. So do you think this is a bad idea for out. CM Punk? Worked out. Well, <laughs> worked out. Yeah, they work. It's called a work, and then they're shoot, brother. You yeah, know, guys that are a shoot. I mean. You know, when you have guys coming in from you, I mean, Brock Lesnar, that's a shoot, dude. You know, I mean, he's in the UFC. He, he was an NCAA that's right. one wrestler. Yeah, 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 brother. He's a hell of a wrestler. And so is Hulk Hogan, dude. Well, I went from playing well, the bass. Yep. No. And then I was, a, well, no, hold on, dude. No. When Brock Lesnar comes in, yeah. he's he's in a shoot fight. That's real when he's mm -hmm. in the w, in the e, UFC, brother. Yeah, that's, you know, we know that. Real, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Then when he goes to WWE, dude, that's a work. He faces Randy Orton. He puts an elbow in his head. It's a work, dude. Yeah, it's a you work. Know, yeah, keep using the word. It's pre, keep saying well, work. Yeah, but you it's a work. The work. It, no, all work. I asked you a it's very a simple question, term, dude. Do you see him part? What's he gonna do? Well, he's gonna hit that that GTS brother that go to sleep. He gets him up on his shoulders and no, then carry him in work. and a fireman stop. And he drops call. him and he hits that knee. No. And then his opponent, brother, he's gonna be out. He's gonna go to sleep, brother. Well. Yeah, I don't think he's. Yeah, gonna do that you to think he'll get call. a three count? Well, how long has his opponent been wrestling in the WWE? What's his? Never has. He's a UFC fighter, yeah. and he's a long, rangy kid. He's yeah. a big one seventy. Well, I don't know. He's a purple belt in jujitsu, and yeah. he can bang. Yeah, but CM Punk was a world champion in the WWE. Not dude. in a real fighting sport. Well, it's a work, dude. No. I don't want you to say it's real. It's a work. Okay, it's, okay. it's all work. That's saying. what they call it. It's all right, we're gonna go talk. We're gonna go. We'll get back. We're gonna have to go to the next. Thanks for stopping by. Hey Hulk, great to see you. All right, dude. All right, you hit on one of them a minute ago. Um, the Cowboy Robbie Lawler fight got announced also for 205 in Madison Square Garden. They say co. They, did they say co-main event or anything? Not that I'm aware of. Not yet. That card's gonna be stacked going to Madison Square Garden for the first time. Yeah, the Cowboy and, and Robbie. Oh my lord! I can't wait to go to Madison Square Garden. It's my town, and I am gonna be cheering on Robbie Lawler. Can, well, can, can the fighters be, stay at your Trump Tower? It, absolutely. It's going to be amazing. All the fighters stay at Trump Tower. Everybody knows this. And dirty, crooked Hillary will not be at UFC 205. Can you guarantee that, though? I guarantee. Look, when I take office yeah. and Robbie Lawler is the champion of the, what you call it? UFC. 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 Yeah. Then he will be staying at Trump. And I'll tell you this. We are going to... Cut ISIS off at the root. Well, Obama, how are you do that? Obama I, I, created ISIS. I don't think he, that's me, not fair. And my new Secretary of Defense, Robbie Lawler. Robbie oh, wow. Lawler's going to be your I'm Secretary of Defense? Announcement does now. he know this? Yes. That's amazing. Yes, he does. He, he does? He, he said, I'm brilliant. He said, Donald Trump is a brilliant man. Okay, I, I, Robbie I doesn't like seem lying. like the best choice to be Secretary of Defense. That's a very intricate job. You've got to know geopolitics. You've got to understand the dynamics of American military. I call life. people up for a favor, and they kiss my ass. Okay, They kiss man. my ass. Okay. Uh, you're very uh, behind the uh, polls, though. Uh, I don't know that you're going to uh, be... Everybody <laughs> knows that. Uh, 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 well, thanks, uh, Donald. Thanks uh, for that assessment. Uh, uh, Thank you. Oh, uh, oh no. Uh, uh, all right. Oh, Go ahead. That? Next, uh, next I love that fight. I'll break it down oh, as it gets Yeah, closer. when we get to near 205, yeah. we'll break that whole thing down. Tough fight. Next one we got. Last one we got. Current estimates indicate that UFC 202, the show headlined by McGregor Diaz, to, will be the biggest UFC pay-per-view of all time. It's going to be, it's, so far, it's looking like it's going to hit 1.65 million buys, which will put it at number one, right above McGregor's fight against uh, Diaz, also at 196. And then third would be UFC 100 with, the, with Brock. So uh, remember, remember Brock I told Brand. you we'd see what kind of drawing power Connor really has. Yeah. And if this, and it also shows you the state of the UFC. So, I mean, there's no one even close to that, man, with Connor. No, no one even. So, and going back to Luke Rockhold, so when Luke Rockhold goes, fuck you, pay me, or I'm not fighting, the UFC goes, kick rocks, and they're, go get your modeling on. We'll see you when, when you want to fight again. <laughs> go get your now, when on. Conor McGregor goes, fuck you, pay me, they go, let's talk. Yeah. Because just economics. biggest pay per view of all time. That's the way that it's just economics. It's not, it's no knock on anybody. I mean, if I'm Luke, I'm going to do the same we damn thing. We see in our podcast. I've, I've said some ridiculous shit, but our numbers speak for themselves. Yeah. Where other shows or other fighters they had the show would probably get kicked Luke off. Luke yeah. will probably come to the same themselves. realization that something like so. So um, I, I was negotiating this thing. I come with a number. They go, no. And there's you'll, Luke will come to the number that he is worth. We all do. <laughs> there is a number. So we. They, 
they, it's funny. What anytime, do you mean? Well, so if you're an entertainer of any kind, you, there's if you're an actor nowadays, and you know this, mm -hmm. there's a number attached to you. So, so, uh, and, and that number is what you are worth. Luke will according learn quickly who? according to essentially how many butts butts you can get in the seat. It's a little different though because in, in acting, right, you can mm -hmm. go to multiple different studios who will right. maybe they think you're worth more. In the UFC, Luke might say, I'm worth a million dollars. Sure. The UFC's going go, no, you're not. Right. You're worth 400 <laughs> grand. Right. Exactly. In acting where there's like a bunch of different studios, yes. companies, networks, and this and that where you've right. established a quote. UFC, UFC that, has that, an and advantage and where and they're that, like, yeah. we've got all the data. Yeah. Oh, and we also have you under contract. Right. So you signed this. Yeah. You think you're worth this? We're telling you you're not. Right. Where else are you going to go? Yeah. Math. The yeah. movies are a little different because I can yes. go, all right, fuck it. I'll go to Sony. Sure. You don't like this, I'm going to Universal. Right. Sure. You don't like this, I'm going to Netflix. You don't like, you know, I can kind of. Just like when I went to WCW. Okay, all right. Sorry. All right. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. you, you, know what's, you know what's funny is that the, 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 when you look at the courts and how they have to deal with shit, like you lose your a wife in a wrongful death suit, right? And it's your wife is the most important thing in the world to you. They just, there's a number. They go, you, you'll get. Three hundred thousand dollars, or a million dollars, or whatever it is, and that is according to a whole bunch of data. For example, earning power if a man dies when he's older, when he's seventy-eight, mm -hmm. he's worth way less than when he was fifty-five because you know he has a lot more earning power yeah. in his family, and they, they take all that shit into account. There's like basically an algorithm. For now, what you're worth. If, now if if Luke wants to, if if you, if everyone is up their value on the market. Luke gets together with Chris Weidman, Yoel Romero, mm -hmm. uh, Nate Diaz, Nick Diaz, CM Punk, Brock Lesnar. You get together with all these guys because as one guy, the UFC can just go kick rocks nerd. If the masses, if the top 50 guys are like, we're not doing shit till you pay us our worth, well, then you got something. I don't believe in unions. Of course you don't, Trump. Don't. Nope. I pay Ivana $20 a month in alimony. Well, well, that doesn't that seem bankrupt, like a lot. Well, yeah, that doesn't seem right. I'm there's Mexicans Mickey in the Gall. UFC. There's Mexicans in the UFC. I love Mexicans. They're stupid and they're better than us, and they're losers, and they're beating us, <laughs> and they're winners. And I love them. You have a lot of mixed messages. Hate them. You have well, a lot okay. of mixed okay. messages. I don't. I, I don't know what you stand them, for. And I have no respect for them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, Donald, you just don't make well, any Is sense. that it, Ev? That's wrap on. Current time. events with Ev in the body. Current events. Ooh. We got a little dropping knowledge. I don't know if you know this. Are you, yeah. Yeah. I yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's take a I piss. Have to Let's piss. take a piss first. Come on. Uh, my dropping knowledge is that uh, you know how you hear that suicide bombers will get seventy-two virgins if they're Islamic that when they die, 72 virgins will be waiting for them in paradise. Have you heard this? This is yeah, very, yeah. very common. They all think yep. if, they, yeah. if they kill themselves for the cause, they yeah. get virgins. Do you know that, in fact, that's nowhere in the Quran? Really? Nowhere. Nowhere. It is, i got to read through it again. Nowhere in the Quran does it say <laughs> that, that you, first of all, suicide is... is can, it's a sin. It's a real sin in the Quran. I'm gonna have to go back um, there. God damn it. There, there are there are very weak translations based on the idea that paradise will have maybe 72 uh, uh, companions and things like that. But as far as them being virgins and 72, and the idea that you'll go to heaven in your earthly body is essentially heretical to Islam anyway. you got to be a real dumbass, A, to believe that, yeah. B, to strap a bomb to your chest. The interesting so it kind of makes sense they yes. do it, doesn't it? Yeah. Hey, well, that, what, that's uh, what I was going to say. That's what, What's interesting about it is that the, when you say that enough, the people themselves, these young men, start believing it. it. Yeah. Sure. And in fact... Uh, Bro, get your dick cards. Sure. Once you blow this up, go ahead and get your dick yeah. cards. Because when you get yeah. up there, yes. it's 72 yeah. of them. Hey, guys. You better uh, be ready. Tell you what, uh, living with 72 women, that'd be something. Uh, living with one woman's hard enough, right? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. Exactly, yeah. hey. I'm going to be at the Mike and Stool in Dayton. <laughs> Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> Mike and Stool. So be careful what you read. Be careful what you hear. Yeah. Well, I think the, I I think think the dropping the knowledge is go that. back through the Quran because you yeah. obviously missed something. Yeah. If you think blowing yourself up gets you 72 uh, Right. Get on the dark web and read yes. the Quran. No, get on the dark web. Just get the cliff notes like I do. <laughs> the cliff, right. Get the cliff notes because here's what they tell you on the dark web. When you get to heaven, 
They're not all virgins. There's going to be some whores mixed oh, sure. in. That's right. Oh, sure. You're going to have some experienced whores. You're going to want to go to Quran.dark slash web. Virgins are wanna, boring. You want to search 72. You want to search virgins. I want 72 sluts. Yes. Yeah, I don't good. want the virgins. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I tell you what. Hey, well, 72 virgins. How about uh, 10 uh, hard drinking uh, college? That's chicks, right. Eh? <laughs> in, <laughs> yeah, the, right in, the, in the very quickly in the hadith, which is essentially the other the other verse that people point to, the other sort of text, that which is what Muhammad the prophet said what he did his practices and the commentary on that there is this idea there is a very loose translation that says you'll have 72 companions who might be women and also by the way 80,000 servants who the fuck wants that many servants where are they coming from it, it's all it's all this weird how you interpret and how and who translated what and when it's all interesting it's Don't all blow religion yourself up, kids. being hijacked you ain't getting 72 virgins no but it's fun to make stuff Let's up. Let's go some fan questions. Yeah. Which guy? Fan man? questions. Fan questions. All right. First fan question. Are Will Sasso and Brendan Schaub more excited for CM Punk's debut or AJ Styles versus Dean Ambrose at Backlash? <laughs> I have no idea who that is. That's like a, the paper. The next pay-per-view is, is T, AJ Styles versus Dean is Ambrose. Is that big? Uh, no, not really. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a Dean Ambrose guy. I'll say it. I'm going to say it out loud. Not very entertaining to me. I use the word entertaining because I know it's work, dude. Yes, you yeah, know it's I mean? a work. Yeah. Uh, so CM Punk, I can't. I need to hear what y'all are saying I'm excited. about this. I'm excited to watch it. I just want to see what happens. I just can't. I cannot wait. What you're excited from? What point? Like, because you're. If people that don't know, if you've never heard of Will Sasso, you're living under a rock. But he's. A uber WWE fan. Since you do I was a like young boy. you do like fight campaigns for the WWE. Yeah, we, the we big kind of stopped doing it, but it's fun. It was fun to do. We just like get get on there. And, you yeah, know your WWE. You also, Absolutely. Did, did you write for the WWE too? Did no, you do something. No, my good stuff? pal Tommy Blotcher right. was was uh, during the Attitude Era. Went from uh, uh, literally was working uh, was writing at Conan, Conan O'Brien, uh, late night with Conan O'Brien. Vince McMahon was a guest and said, "Hey, we're always looking for writers." And Tommy was leaving the show. And he goes, oh, "I guess I, he goes. I don't want to be on my deathbed going, I didn't do that." Yeah. So so he went and wrote for them for a year. That's kind of cool. He turned out to be one of their big years anyway, with all the Stone Cold and The Rock and everything. Um, so, yeah, so you're, super you're into, into it. it from what aspect? That you want to see that since your childhood heroes that are doing a work, they're yeah. actually going to do work now? Uh, look, like you want to see how it works I out? I don't think that there's – here's my – Here's my professional opinion, and I'm allowed to have it. You yep. sure as hell are. Just as a professional who's not involved in either of those professions. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's my <clears throat> my man on the street. I think that CM Punk, Phil Brooks, is is making a bad decision to do does most of the wwe feel that way though i don't like know it don't, i don't know does, what the, what the, but what's the because i have no I idea think fans what's the beat from the wwe fans like are they like damn cm punk's gonna be champo and seven or they're like no. dude what the fuck's he doing i think most people are like this is stupid mm -hmm. what, are, what are you thinking that's what i think i i i think of it as somebody who says i'm gonna try to ride a bull and right. I haven't done a lot of bull riding. Right, and they haven't. Okay. And they haven't. I'm gonna, yet I'm gonna get a on bull. a simulator, and then I'm gonna get on a real yeah. bull. I, I'm no, interested. I, I'm interested to see or, or hear what the actual WWE fans think. Like, are they like, damn, CM Punk's gonna take over no. like he did in WWE? I do not think so. Or are well, they look, like, dude, what the fuck is he okay, doing? Okay, so, so because Brock Lesnar kind of set the yeah, standard, but Brock, but and he's everyone, a freak. But everyone knows what Brock Lesnar is. I don't think they do. If you yes, look at do. our comments, it's insane. Really? Yes. That blows my mind. Go, What's the difference between CM Punk and oh, Brock? Are you God. serious? Oh. People wake up. If you've written that, shut up right now. Brock Lesnar is Brock Lesnar. He's, he's uh, NCAA he's champion. As undefeated. A he yeah. was undefeated. Beast. He's an absolute beast. They got him into the you know into the Super WWE because they're like, now what are you going to do? He also went through a training camp at the NFL, Minnesota Vikings. He just like walked on freak. and he almost made it on the yeah. Vikings. Last cuts. Have the last never cuts, played I football. Yeah. I mean, uh, Brendan, have you ever seen anybody like just walk there, on there, like that? There's a there's a uh, not to shit on Brock Lesnar because he is a freak, but there's a uh, uh, a tackle for the New England Patriots. Never played a down of football. Was an amazing wrestler in college, oh. and the New England Patriots like came in with how big and uh, quick you are. We think right. you'd be an NFL player, and he started for like twelve years for New England wow. Patriots. Amazing. That tackle, and, wow. and, but he's probably 
six six and four hundred and ten pounds. Correct. With and he's the exception. Body fat. He's the yes, exception. Yes, absolutely. When you see a guy like that, Brock Belichick goes, "Wait a minute, Correct. these mechanics are we can teach him." And right, because of course football is a skill set that's very particular. And Brock Lesnar, not with that skill set. The shit that I watched of him in preseason, I was like, "Oh, he's all over the place," and he still almost made it. Yeah. He's still. I mean, he's, there's, there's an epic story of him getting a fight in training camp and literally picking the guy up over his head and slamming him to the ground. Oh, this was Brock. He's horrifying. Yeah. So in wrestling, you know, in, in professional wrestling, in, in the WWE and all that stuff, there's all sorts of different bodies because it's about, you know, you know the entertainment side of it. CM Punk has always been a guy who in his earlier days, he was in uh, Ring of Honor and stuff like this. He's His name is Punk. He's CM Punk. He's got like the... He's you know, anti-man, right? right? Like anti the man, right. fuck the boss. Right. So he's not, he never had that... Pepsi Vince, tattoo. Right. He, he he, he never had that. He never had that Vince McMahon, gym body that Vince McMahon loves. The Hulk Hogan's and yeah. all those guys over the years that are just, you know, on whatever they're doing and they're just massive. They yeah. look amazing. They look like superheroes, right? So over the years, it's sort of become yeah. But there's also guys that can do really fun moves. They've sort of innovated some f- really cool looking shit, and they talk on the mic. They're great yeah. talkers. CM Punk is one of the he's best. he's a great talker. Great talker. One of the best. One of the best talkers ever. God, because he's the interview. Well, it's not. It's not transition the UFC because I think because he can't play that character he has Correct. to play the real character that's right it's not good no it's not he, I've seen him interviewed and for, they're not good right because no I saw, I saw some shit they're people, terrible oh yeah people are like want to rib him or talk to him or whatever I know. he can't roll with the punches because no. he can't go listen fuck you blah 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 it's and get there. the character because he but wants then, to be but, legit but, but if he did that he'd be so much bigger yeah well, but, but the, also but that would be fake because yeah. a guy like Chael Son and a guy like Brock Lesnar does it, fighters. yeah. But Brock, Le- but those are those guys are, uh, of course, yeah. they're fighters. So it's like when the when you see about- Conor McGregor go off and like Conor McGregor's comments about the WWE and stuff, I thought that was brilliant because obviously he's making look. The WWE is quote unquote a work, brother, right? So so <laughs> Conor McGregor's like, yeah, I'm gonna work you fuckers. Yeah, like, I'm gonna work. That's you what guys. he's doing. Right? And he everyone, got, everyone pissed. Everyone off. was like, fuck you, I'll oh, kill you, little dude. man. Right. This is real too. He's but like, it's well, like gotcha. He, yeah, gotcha. He Everyone got every, was talking about him. Right. Yeah. So that's so in order to in order to well, it's like anything, but in order to talk a big game, you have to have some game. There has to be something at the core. But CM Punk doesn't have the, anything. The, but the only reason CM Punk got signed to the UFC, and if you don't know this, you're a f- idiot. The only reason he got signed is to sell tickets. Absolutely, it's not to be a Absolutely. title holder. It's not to be a contender to sell tickets. Yeah. When I when I signed CM Punk, part of my stipulation, I'm signing CM Punk the talker. That's not right. Not CM Punk the fighter. Well, look when he yeah. I, I, so fucking talk, Paris. Right when, when he was, I remember when he was interviewed by by Joe Rogan at the uh, whichever it was back in like two December's ago yeah, now yeah. or whatever. A while ago, yeah. And he's like, hey, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna blah blah blah. And he's wearing a suit. And and look, this is my editorial opinion. I think Joe Rogan's looking at him, just looking at him, going, smiling, going, yes. like I could, I, I'll rip your legs off right yes. now. And and then he goes, uh, and then Joe Rogan says, well, good luck. And he goes, luck's for losers, Joe. Blah blah blah. <laughs> and I'm like, hey man, this isn't the WWE. What are you doing? Yeah. Because you're a small guy over there. Yeah. Yeah. These guys will fucking kill you. Yeah. And also, he talked some shit about a friend of mine on Twitter. So fuck him. And Mickey Gall follows me on Twitter. So that's how that works. Uh, shout out be, to Mickey Gall. Yeah, shout what out the, to Mickey Gall. What's, what's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout out to Mickey Gall. What's funny to me is he does. He, Joe goes, well, good luck. He goes, luck is for losers, Joe. Dead serious. You could tell it took every ounce of restraint <laughs> from Rogan to not just go. Fuck you, yeah. and but then it, choke him out. But if it was a, we all realize Rogan right. could beat him up, correct? <laughs> yes, everyone's well aware of that. Yes, of course. Yes. But now, now I when see. You're watching, I see questions all the time. Like I'd love to see Joe Rogan versus blah blah blah. Oh, you see, Joe would lose. Yeah. He's older. He would lose. Joe Rogan actually would beat yeah. up CM Punk. Yes, Let's just be so. clear on this. Right. He would 100% beat he would him. Roundhouse up. kick him in the fucking ribs. <laughs> you do whatever he wants with him. Follow He's up. better at every single aspect well, of mixed yes. martial arts than CM Punk. I'm watching yes. him on the internet. I've talked to you guys about this video where he's teaching George St. Pierre a spinning, like back a spinning yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, and George St. Pierre's like, oh, let me try it yeah, this yeah. time. Because he's, and then they're doing it together. Yeah. And I'm like, both of these guys will make your pancreas explode. Like yeah. I'm, I'm looking at those kicks. For CM Punk to say that in the presence of, <laughs> it was of funny though. <laughs> Likes for losers, Joe. See you later. But if that was like a high school fight, it would just be pop. Like my, yes. my thing about it is, they I wouldn't wonder wait until the three. You, you, you know what my thing is? If people get mad because I critique CM Punk, blah blah blah. blah. 
I, I respect what he's doing. I really do. The balls it takes for him yes, to yeah. is do it this. Balls? Is it? I'm sorry. I think, it, I think he's I a social. I know wrestling guy. fans, and, 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 and I listen to like, I, I do listen to uh, like some wrestling podcasts. You're balls deep in wrestling. I, I love wrestling. I love my wrestling. And here's, here's the thing about it I love, uh, yeah. Uh, it, 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 there's, there's, um, uh, shout out to Mr. St. Laurent and uh, Kevin <laughs> Sullivan, uh, MSL and Sullivan show. That's one of my favorite shows to listen to. It's it's my favorite wrestling podcast to listen to because Mr. St. Laurent is this guy's like 30, but he's been booking. They call it booking when you go, you're going to beat him and this okay. is how it's going to end and blah, blah, blah. And he's been doing that his whole life and he's a young guy and he's been on the indie circuits. Kevin Sullivan is, is a living legend. He's in his 60s probably now. He's still in great shape. And he was in the 70s and he was he booked all the WCW you the Hulk Hogan uh Kevin Nash the NWO like the the Scott Hall all the in the 90s when gotcha. I, remember when all those guys were in the other went thing? black almost right? yeah. like went, NWA went black and white yeah NWO yeah. yeah and when Macho Man Roddy yes. Piper were all over there so Kevin Sullivan was behind the scenes in the WCW book and that stuff and to listen to those guys talk about wrestling there's it's it's fun because they've actually they've actually done it I can't listen to too many uh uh, just sort of wrestling nerds talk about wrestling and you go, they should have done this. They yeah. should have done that. Yeah. But when I listen to that show and, and when you sort of follow of credibility, comments, yeah, well, it's just, they know what it is and it's a fun time to talk about sure. because they, but also it's not all gossip, but they're qualified. Mm -hmm. And I, it's like, to me, you know, when I listen to these uh, wrestling podcasts and stuff and I say, I put them aside cause they've, they're, they've done it and other people who you know of course like Ric Flair has a fucking podcast if he's going to talk about it he's going to talk about Stone it Stone Cold Steve Austin has a, has a podcast and he's, and he's a huge UFC fan so Stone Cold's going to talk like shoot right down the middle and go here's what I think do you know happen. what Stephen I don't mean to interrupt do you know yeah. what, what Stephen A thinks about CM Punk Stephen A Smith uh, sorry <laughs> yes him too I know what he thinks Steve, oh, really? what Steve Austin, Austin thinks I, I don't know what uh, Steve Austin thinks I think I'm sure he's commented on it right on the show I, I, yeah I, I actually now I'm going to want to listen we're supposed saying. to get on this podcast we were on a we gotta uh, get group text. Yeah. We yeah. gotta get him on this podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. Because he's he's a huge. Uh, my my thing about CM Punk is if you want to fight a mixed martial arts fight, yeah. there are plenty of venues to do that. Where you the, can that get a good, see, this is what I'm and, saying. And then he says, "No, but I want to do it in the UFC." See, okay, see, here's okay. Now here's getting back to my belabored go big point. Or go I'm home. sorry, I was talking about all the different viewpoints and where they come from. Long and, story short, right? To make a long story even longer, the the deal is, in my opinion, a lot of these, uh, a lot of the wrestling fans and a lot of the people on the internet, uh, the 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 what do they call it anyway? The dark web. But but the, yeah, the dark web of wrestling. They're like, <laughs> hey, but you got to hand it to him. Big respect for even walking in there. I don't, I disagree. I really? think, yes. I See, think, I give him respect though. Uh, what's that? I give him respect for that. Okay, I'd like to ask you why. No, well, tell me why you you don't though. Because first. he's going to get a lot of money to do it. Correct. And he's Which is why he's in, doing it, really. Right. So I, every time I watch fight, every time I watch a UFC fight, Anytime the three of us have been together watching something, I always say the same thing. Different dudes. Brendan, when I first got to know you, I was like, so how did you get into that? I was so yeah. fascinated with, and and I've always been, I think if you don't respect fighting and you're talking about fighting, you're an idiot. So I, I, I think, here's, here's what I think. You don't I think he has do. enough respect. Here's what I think I could do in the UFC. I think I could get people talking about what is this fat son of a bitch doing in the thing and then i could walk in there and then i could get my face exploded yes. and then i'll take a few thousand dollars for having my face rearranged yes. or having or maybe they don't want to take mercy on me by knocking me the fuck out and dropping me to the ground like a sack of patan <laughs> as we like to say in italy that's potatoes <laughs> i'm calling patan. myself yeah because another thing they could do is say i'm not going to punch you i'm going to chase you around i'm going to get you on the ground and i'm going to rip your elbow apart or choke you unconscious choke you unconscious this is the thing ufc doesn't care <laughs> They the, don't care. UFC does not care how you go out. That's right. You're, all they care about is the bottom line, which is dollars. So I think Mickey Gall, if I were Mickey Gall and I wanted to make an impression, look, CM Punk wants to make an impression. We all want to you know, make an impression in life. The, there's a bottom line these guys want to earn. If I were Mickey Gall and I'm speaking to my Twitter friend, Mickey Gall now, we've never tweeted to each other. So I'm going to use. I hope he's not on social <laughs> media this week. <laughs> right. I would 
if I were him, I would sort of slap around at, at Cena. I would do some slapping like stuff. Yeah. And then I would get him on the ground and I would like just dislocate his finger. Like just uh, just the middle finger. Hey. Just your thumb. And then the pinky toe. And I would just sort of slowly because dismantle him. if he can do that now i might be wrong maybe cm punk wins and i'm a fucking fool for saying what i'm saying but that's why we talk to talk i believe that this is a big mistake and i fully believe in my heart cm punk has already won so do i respect cm punk for for doing that of course i i respect him as a businessman and he's very entertaining to me i've always been a fan of him as a wrestler you like him as a WWE oh my guy. god he's the fucking people he's love the him, shit huh? oh is he's, he's so huge is he good. huge yeah they want they brock lesnar size like yeah, brock, yeah, yeah, yeah. really they chant he has the same draw powers like a lesnar or a rock or if, something if cm punk came back and my opinion is that he will eventually uh it, he will be a huge draw because he went and went through this whole thing but wrestling but, loves comebacks they love it when people take a, a big story. lot of time off mm. and then they come back it's like oh he's here so, yeah, so yeah. is he is he but as far as draw power right now yeah was he on the same level as a brock lesnar absolutely or? oh wow john cena idea. yeah absolutely oh, wow. if he came back tomorrow he'd be the biggest guy in it what because he's that big well imagine okay so physicality aside imagine uh uh, anybody like who's a big like like you know R Rowdy Roddy Piper rest in peace if Ra back in the day when Rowdy Roddy Piper left and he went to do uh, They Live he went he's like in like 87 or 88 he's like I'm done I'm gonna go do my thing and act and blah 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 eventually he goes okay the movies went all right I'm still doing that and I realize I can do both or and he comes back Maybe this reference is a the little Rock old. Does it? The he Rock. does movies. Rock, He's gone for a while, then does huge WrestleMania. Right. Yeah. That, when the Rock does he comes come back, back, yeah. No, the, he I comes mean, back the Rock every is year. the Rock is the Rock, yeah. right? So no he's, one bigger. No one bigger. So awesome. He's incredible. He's but when so the Rock awesome. comes back, the only thing that would be get a bigger reaction than CM Punk coming back is if it's the, the next music that hits was the Rock, and then they talk shit. Because so when the Rock comes back, oh, it's been a couple of years since we've seen the Rock. When that music hits. Everyone goes crazy. Right. It's this spectacle. It's this incredible sure. show. It's all about the show. Sure. So yeah, I, w I wonder. Yeah. So, so mean, I think he's already, to see the ratings. He's he's yeah. already won. He look. He has a lot of problems with the WWE, and that's why he left. Is the, that real? Yes, that all makes sense, and that's real. And and they allowed him to sort of air some of his beef on the show. And they, they he you know when they talk, they call it a promo, and he dropped the, they call it the pipe bomb promo, where he's like pipe bomb, and he kept saying all this real shit. He was shooting, brother. And um, he said all this real stuff, and he left. Now, when you're leaving and you've got a lawsuit with the WWE over some medical stuff and this and that and his back or whatever, uh, which, by the way, it's like, well, don't go to the UFC if you're a beat-up 37-year-old. If you're old. Yeah. why don't go to the yeah. UFC for your oh, next oh, job? You've been, oh, you've been doing nothing but wrestling for 20 years and you're in pain? Do you mm. want to test drive cars and run them into walls, too? Is <laughs> yeah. that what's next? Yeah, yeah, smart. Yeah. Why, don't you be, test dummy? why don't you be a yeah. stuntman for Mark Wahlberg? That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so he, when he goes off, <laughs> I, I have all the respect of a guy going, you know what? I don't need this. Fuck that. I, got, I have nothing but respect for CM Punk as... As a businessman, as a showman, as a professional wrestler, I think he's fantastic. I think he's so entertaining. I am a fan. Uh, and he's already won because he's got this money coming in from UFC. And if they're if he loses and they're dumb enough to let him do it again, yeah. that's going to be insulting that's yeah. what i to the say UFC. if he loses and they continue to let him do this shit that's stupid that now we're in it's trouble. just but he's already won if he has one fight then he goes back, back to the wwe, WWE. Correct. it's a good plan where it's all about you know it would be like charlie sheen coming back on two and a half men how yeah. dare you right how dare you how how fucking i couldn't think of a better how example. dare you yeah. charlie sheen. and be like right, dude, yeah. hey what, what's going let's on let's go to the next <sighs> let's go to the next huge, question anyway he's gonna get his face kicked in and god bless him hey mickey gall is gonna make you go mickey gall hit hit that's up your boy will a lot of opinions that's good that's good you know what let me tell you something another thing another thing hold on i'm gonna start just a wrestling podcast just a rat. You, you and Mickey Gall. Fuck you 10 minute Gull. podcast. It's over. Today. That's my announcement. Jesus. Yeah, we're done. Jesus, yeah, dude. Fuck it. That show, four years Come whatever. on over and do a wrestling segment on our fucking show. You got now. it. I'm going to sit here yeah. and just yell and scream until I'm wet in the face with sweat <laughs> That's about, awesome. about worked wrestling. But I will say, I'd love to. You know, fuck it. Tommy Blotch and I. That's what we're going to do. And Chad Colchin's a huge fan of the UFC. We're going to force him to sit there and listen to us talk about wrestling. Good. There's no fucking clue what we're talking about anytime we do. Love it. I would like to just do nothing but talk about people who leave wrestling and what the fuck they're doing next. 
Rick fucking Steiner, he's a real estate agent. That guy fucking <laughs> nailed it, all right? That guy's a Ronnie Garvin, I'll tell you what, Ronnie Garvin, Ronnie Garvin back in the day, he had that iron fist, right? It was Ronnie and Jimmy Garvin back in the early, in the end of the day. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, no, we're following. Ronnie Garvin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's probably in his 60s now. He went way back with Kevin What about the guy doing yoga now? Well, I'm fucking DDP. DDP does yoga. Yeah, I fucking do this fucking yoga. Diamond Dallas Page. You want to? We'll text that motherfucker right now. All right, take it easy. Take it easy, all right. Okay, here's the thing. Ronnie Garvin he did a lot of flying around when you're a wrestler. You know what he did? He became a fucking pilot. Jesus. That guy's winning at life. We're talking sense. about all these guys transitioning. That's what I'm talking all right. about. CM Punk, he goes from I don't call, it, be call, wrestler it, call it Plan B with Will Sasso. Right. That's what's up. And I'll CM look Punk, at it. Let me look at your marketing. CM Punk we'll should have been idea. Chris D'Elia's stunt double. And instead, what he's doing is he's walking into the UFC. He's going to get. I, Mickey Gall, you know what? You know what's the most insulting thing you can do, Mickey Gall? You're really my, fired up. My, my mouth to your ears, don't Mickey tell Gall. Spank him. You know what? Ah, worse, worse. Okay. Slap him in the neck. Okay. Oh, yes. his face. And when you slap a man in the neck and he goes, eh, that's like, eh, eh, right? That's yeah. what you Humiliating. do. If I was, I'm getting spit on the mic. I'm so upset. Jeez, you really on. Mad. We gotta move on. Oh, man, next never, question. Dude, Come your lady, on. your lips are white. I know they're white. I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> dude, you got clam chowder all over the place. Oh, God, he's dying. <laughs> he's dying a violent death. <laughs> Quick, water. get him chowder. <laughs> What do you got, Evan? Hey. <laughs> What'd you think about Hard Knocks and the players they cut, including Kush? Uh, I love the Hard Knocks series. Uh, L.A. Rams is fun to watch. Guys getting cut, always it's always the worst part of the show. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You're talking to a guy who did get cut like that, just wasn't on TV. So uh, Hard Knocks, that's what they do. I think it's good for people to see how ruthless professional sports is. <sighs> if if, if oh, seeing professional sports, guys getting kicked in the face and losing fight and getting half their pay isn't ruthless enough – on Hard Knocks, you get to see guys basically lose their entire childhood dreams. And that's why Vince HBO. McMahon called it sports entertainment there because he wanted to escape the athletic commissions because it's not a sport. Because he it's can control the outcome. It's sports entertainment. Yes. So CM Punk, you want to walk out of the ring with a real guy? I'm telling you, if Ronnie Garvin retired from God damn it. I'm sorry. All right, man. Last Evan, question now. Right. Last question. Go, man, man, hurry up. How would Hulk Hogan get... Ah, oh, shit. Fuck. Fuck. No, not that question. No, We're next not, one. Next one. We're not going to do that damn it, Evan. <laughs> I know. Someone, How are Hulk Hogan doing in the fucking like, UFC? What would Hulk Hogan do in the Come UFC? On. What's your favorite wrestling match of all time? Oh, oh who gives fuck. a shit? God Next question. Damn. Next question. Come on, dude. Fuck. Best martial arts film of all time. Oh. Not bad. Not blood, bad blood question. Sport. Blood no, 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 no. Enter the dragon. Enter blood the dragon. sport. Enter the dragon. That's Samuel ridiculous. Hung. No, no, enter the dragon. Without Bolo Le Young. Blood sport. Enter, 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 no, no, enter the Blood dragon. Blood sport when Bolo Le Young was. No, no, yes. Yeah, Chong Lee. Yes. No, no, enter the dragon. Enter Bolo's the dragon. first movie, yeah. Uh, my favorite is Rumble in the Bronx. <laughs> With Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. By the way. Rumble in the Bronx. I like Rush Hour myself. Uh, Will, 10 minute podcast at Will Sasso. Uh, breaking news: Will is also starring the next Super Troopers too. Yeah, That's I'm where he goes to, Friday ooh. to shoot. I'm heading out to Boston to shoot that. We're gonna have a good time doing that. I'm one of the bad guys, uh, myself, Rob Lowe, uh, Hayes MacArthur. I Pat love hearing that, man. Good for you, brother. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Uh, right. Listen, we are in San Jose this month on the 22nd. The show is almost sold out, and then we're in Oxnard and Brea, California. In October the 13th, 26th, go see one of the best comics in the world, Brian Callen at. Gotham Comedy Gotham Club in New Comedy York Club, City. New York City September next weekend. September 16 and 17. That's Friday, Saturday, this next week. That is next weekend. 22nd, Fire Kid is live in San Jose. VIP tickets already sold out. General mission, there's barely any left. Will Sasso, I'll tell you, you got what, I'll tell you what else. How about after that, CM Punk does some stand-up comedy. Oh, come you on, man. You do whatever the fuck else he wants, no, huh? No, hey, he'll, he'll, no he'll don't follow take it so guy. personal. He's one of the funniest guys in the world. He's going to follow him. You guys got their fucking thing. Hey, tell you what, San Jose. You can't wait to see Fighter and the Kid. How about CM Punk and me just walk up there? No. Oh, blah, blah, okay. blah, blah. Never no. even fucking met hey, the man. Man. We got to go. All right, this fine. is the Fire Kid and the Man. We're out.